It's very relaxed. It's not news yeah. related. It's just, it's just very chill. I just don't understand why these headphones are not working. In through there. Hello everyone, it's G from the F Word here with another special deep dive episode. Now, I've done a deep dive with my brother, Vass. I've done a deep dive with Anthony. No, oh, sorry. Nick. I've done a deep dive with Nick, but I have not done a deep dive with Anthony yet, and uh, it's about time we did. You know, kind of like, I was thinking about it, it's kind of funny, like you think the order would be like the opposite in a way, I guess yeah. just timeline wise. Yeah, but our, our timeline, very much like the Terminator one, is just all over the place. It's fucked. Yeah, it is fucked. Yeah. And mostly because I had to do those those original deep dives were uh, because they were in lieu of the mm-hmm. main show. And I mean, this is in lieu of the main show because I'll be away this weekend. But now that they, like when they picked up Steam, it was kind of like a thing to have in my back mm-hmm. pocket. Ideally, I'd like to have like seven or eight of them just in the back oh, and then okay. when I need Just them I can toss them to out because the thing is they're not really dependent on anything timeline yeah, no. like you know when we do our show the reason we're not doing it this week which we could have brought Vass in here and just did a regular show but then there's probably going to be something coming out Thursday and Friday and potentially Saturday morning mm-hmm. that could either debunk everything we've talked about or just really just throw it for a loop there's also like nothing to talk about like nothing big that's kind of like we yeah, there's some to discuss and stuff. And yeah, it's just kind of like whatever. Like no one really cares. Yeah. So uh, as you all know, the F Word Podcast is a proud affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, and that is sponsored by Connexus Credit Union. You can go to Connexus. What is it? It's ConnexusMoneyTalk.ca, and uh, you can also go hashtag Money Talk, uh, the Connexus Money Talk blog or the Connexus hashtag Money Talk blog, which will provide you with expert advice, tips, and solutions for all life stages and events. And one of them is saying, getting married. I'm going to a wedding this weekend. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It'll be fun. How's your homework? Stupid. Like That's I was doing econ and just like such a grind because I'm like three chapters behind now because mm-hmm. we like kind of go over a chapter each class. I'm just doing these mastery points and it's just kind of like, I don't know. It's literally just a grind. That's it. It's just it's just so fucking boring. Everything else, like stats, like I had a quiz for stats today, and he uploaded the answer sheet onto like the classroom, and I like looked at it, and like everything looked pretty. Like I got like at least an eighty, I would say, on the quiz, which is like for math, I fucking suck at it. So mm. that's like much better than I was expecting, because at the end of the quiz, I was like, I either did really good, or I fucking bombed it, because it was just way too easy. And like I either like did this perfectly, or I just did it so wrong in so many ways. But then I, yeah, I think I did good. So. Well, the, the key is to find out who are the smartest kids in the class, mm-hmm. and if you, the, it's always works. If you finish before them, the chances are you screwed up big time. I know everyone's like everyone was freaking out though. Like I was talking to smart kids, like we're like good at math, and they're like, I have no idea what's going on. Like I'm stressed. I'm like, oh, this is no fucking help. Like, but they were smart from high school, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I found they had like a 96 average. So I feel like yeah. you know it would like somewhat carry over. Well, a lot of it I found is structure too. Mm-hmm. So my first year, and I only did one year, so mm-hmm. if. In my in my mind, if you get through your first year and you go to all your finals, which I didn't do, mm. uh, then you've you're like you know you surpass me. So you're very close to surpassing me educationally, oh. education wise. Um, but yeah, the structure was not as handholdy as high school was, mm-hmm. and for someone that's not really looking, at least at the time, wasn't looking to be educated on anything. Like mm-hmm. I didn't care for education. Yeah as much as as I do now like I'm actually reading a book on astrophysics right now and it's Hmm. unbelievable Um, and so the fact that it lacks structure you'd think that that would open me up but if I never because I didn't have that educational foundation where I wanted to learn Mm -hmm. it was harder for me at university because I didn't know what the hell was going on like I didn't know what I needed to know versus what I should know what's going to be when when the Mm -hmm. exams are when everything is and it was a cross between and you probably have this even more so what's in the class and what's online Mm -hmm. and how those coincide right yeah for anthropology that's kind of like the thing for in class like doesn't really fucking matter like i just like zone out in there pretty much because they have like a slideshow you can just go and look at online but for econ it's kind of like you just don't know like what the fuck to like 
it seems like everything's important and you have to read everything. It's kind of like, there's no way it's like this much information. But my midterm, we don't have a test. So just a midterm coming up in October. So it's like, I'll find out then. What's really interesting is, uh, especially when you mention econ, I've got five econ books. Mm-hmm. Like not f- from university. I've gone out and mm-hmm. bought like Economics 101. I bought this breakdown of economics. Uh, I would highly recommend you read Freakonomics. I'll lend you the first one. Uh, and I got that one and think like a freak and I'm going through super freak economics, but I would highly recommend you read those ones because a, they're outstanding mm-hmm. books and they're sarcastically and, and, uh, comedically written. Okay. That's good. But Always good. Like econ's actually a lot more interesting than it is. Like it's an interesting class. It's I just didn't like, take the class either. Oh, and no. for some reason now I'm like, I've been on this kick for like three years of learning about mm-hmm. economics. You know, I like it. It's a, like, I think he's my favorite professor just because he's like just the most like entertaining he's like actually like alive he's not just like whatever just like hates his life yeah. like all my other professors pretty much but yeah i don't know just kind of adjusting to it are any of you any of your buddies adjusting to it this like are you guys in the kind of in the same pace do you have a lot of friends that are in it with you uh like for me like when i'm in school like usually i don't really like talk to people like on weekdays like on weekends like i'll be more sociable but like i know one friend yesterday is planning like he's not planning to like finish university so I don't know. I told him like, well, why even like here then? Like, if you like, because he wants to do something in business related, and you don't need to have a degree in business to be successful. As yeah, as not a anymore. Idea. But like, there, there's a huge paradigm shift mm-hmm. in a lot of the markets for that reason. Yeah. But yeah, he's just like he bet money that I would drop out of university before he did. I'm like, I can't. It's not even a fucking option to drop out of university. And B, I wouldn't mm-hmm. do it anyway because I just, I don't know. I just don't quit at things usually. But you should bet him. Just so he stays in university and goes the full ride. Well, we bet ten bucks who would drop out first. Oh man, I said it that's my... like nothing. That's not even. Yeah, that's not even a, a hangnail in the well, game. Well, the two unemployed guys. Yeah, fair enough. But I am, I am employed. I'm going to Landmark. You are going to yes. Landmark. Oh. Well, EB Games was like again, like they, re- I was, they impressed them, but they weren't like ready to hire me yet because they wanted to like get more people interviewed. And I just said, okay, mm-hmm. well, like I got a week to go to Landmark. That's too late. I'll just go there. And really, the commute's not that bad. Like, for no, those of you who bypass? live in Regina, I mean, it's not terrible. It is now because the ring road's yeah, fucked. Yeah, construction. But, um, once, you get, once you get past, like, always take that Assiniboia mm-hmm. thing and then get onto Arcola and then go the back end from Arcola. Just avoid Vic mm-hmm. as much as you can. But I think once someone said once the bypass is made, it's literally, like, straight from my house, straight that location in, like, five yeah. minutes. Yeah, even when I go to White City, mm-hmm. um, which isn't a long time, but when you take Victoria Avenue, it's actually... It's a like lot longer. I think I DD'd someone. It was like half an hour to drive yeah. out there. So from Arcola, there's actually a back road that they've opened up from a while ago. And when I was in real estate and I had to show houses out there, mm-hmm. it was close to my office. And so you'd take this back road and it'd take you directly to like that Western Pizza, Tim Hortons okay. area. And so you'd you'd avoid everything. And it was great. The only shitty thing is if you were stuck with like a semi or something, mm-hmm. that would give you a pain in the ass. But the reason I ask about university and friends is because like when I went, uh, I think I took a year off. I'm pretty sure I took a year off. And then I went, Mm -hmm. or I went right away. Anyways, it was me, uh, Robert, who I mentioned on the podcast before. He's actually coming on. We're going to do a deep dive, which is going to be sweet. Uh, Sean Hoff, and I don't think my I don't think my friend Shane was on was in there that year. But there was at least a few of us going. But we had all taken different classes. Like they took sociology. I could care less for sociology. Mm -hmm. I took psych. They also took psych with me. I took stats. Uh, obviously math 100 or 101 yeah, or whatever. One and then English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It turns out I'm like really terrible at a lot of these things because my like foundation was brutal. But going with friends at least, yeah, no, I don't know, like... you helped. And Nick helped me my first day of school. Hmm. So I had no idea where to go. Oh, yeah, and no, so I called fun. Nick. Nick, le- this is how much of a mensch Nick is. He left his restaurant just before lunch when it's his busy time when like mm-hmm. he was working. And like for those of you who may not know, Nick ran a restaurant for 19 years and he like owner, operator, and he did the whole thing. Mm-hmm. He left to come to the university to show me where my classes were because I was too stupid to find where my class was. That's a was. decent like way away. It's not like a close. It's like 10 minutes, I'd say, or at least. It, but it's a pain to find parking there and mm-hmm. then to find where it is. Luckily, he knows where everything yeah, no. is, but still the whole ordeal. No, so it's yeah, big as fuck. I think I'm like I have a route, like a route. Yeah. Like so, I know how to get to classes, but like past that, like I'm like lost. I haven't. I know for a fact I haven't gone to like a lot of places in the universe, like Campion. Yeah. I don't think I've gone to. There's this one building I have to go to for a like meeting with my anthropology assistant, like five minute meeting, and I have okay. no idea where it is, but I'll find it probably. I had uh, well, I already talked about my psychology teacher who was who mysteriously vanished halfway through, and then my my math 100 teacher 
was this uh, gentleman from Portugal. And he had just, like, he must have been here for a couple of years because he was very soft spoken and his mm-hmm. accent was thick, like, thicker mm-hmm. than my parents. Okay. That's and thick. so there was so much we just, all of us couldn't understand because mm-hmm. obviously you get to know people in your class and everything like that. Couldn't fucking understand a thing he was saying. It was such a hard. Luckily, the TA was awesome. Mm. And so she was able to, like, fill us in on a lot of the stuff that we may have missed. And that's what you got to do, man. Get in with the TAs. I think so. Not that in though. I don't know. We'll see. You know, we'll see how we'll see how well I can do. You gotta be careful. But the reason you're here, aside from this this deep dive, is that you, I guess you and I are the godfathers of this F word podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say you are like. Have you ever seen the Ocean's movies, like Ocean's Eleven and stuff? No. Oh, for those of you who have, you are like the George Clooney character that brings the team together, mm-hmm. or like that's kind of starts a thing. And I'm like Brad Pitt's character, Rusty, that executes. I, would, I always thought of it like I was Vince McMahon, and you were like Triple H. So I was just like the main, like not the main guy, but like just a mm-hmm. guy who like made it, and then you just do all like the fucking like actual work for the F mm-hmm. for, for the, the F, F yeah. word. Yeah. Well, that's the only thing that survived the F family. That's true. Yeah, which is super interesting. So if you dial back. When did we start this again? When did Spider-Man Homecoming come out? 2017? It was June 2017. So we started like a week before that, maybe two weeks before that. I think we had two episodes. We reviewed Bumble... Or no, we reviewed the fifth Transformers movie, I think, on the first one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then we did... uh, That's back when it was like structured, where it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, now we're going on to the gaming section. Video game, WWE. And then we had the WWF word, which I still think should be a thing. It's a nice logo. It's too nice a logo to go to waste. It's too nice of a name to Mm -hmm. just give up. Like, I'm still keeping that which I think like the WWF word should still be a thing where you and Nick can record it Mm -hmm. and then release it on Wednesdays. And so we'll be releasing like two podcasts a week, which I'm totally fine with because I think it would just be really Mm -hmm. good. Um, Unfortunately, Nick's like knee deep in diapers right now. So there's not much like going on in the wrestling world right now anyway. Like soon, I think 2020 would be like a good year. I think like I just think it's going to be actually like promising year. But like right now it's kind of just dead. Yeah, and then like in that first episode, we also had Bo. I want to get him back on to talk. Video I have no games. idea where Bo is. You haven't seen him at all, hey? No, like I have no idea where to like how to like this guy sucks at like just in general like, from like last communicating. time communicating. Yeah, communicating. He's an awful communicator. A great guy. I love Bo, but he's just yeah. He's I don't know where he is. I haven't seen him in a while, but like I wouldn't see him anyway because like I EB Games was the only like because I worked right beside him. That was the yeah. only like, reason I saw him. But yeah. Well, the inter- the funny thing about him is that like I didn't know who he was, mm-hmm. and I remember we we did that. Co- I think we did one or two episodes together, maybe just one. I think it was one. And it's the guy I've been talking to at EB for like five years or something mm-hmm. like that. Whenever I went to go games, I'm like, oh, this guy's super nice. Didn't know what his name was, and then I'm like, oh, now he's in my basement. Sweet. Mm-hmm. He was an OG too. I remember like back in 2011, like when my parents owned the Triffon's Pizza. Yep. Like he was one of the people that were working there, and it was crazy to think about how like. I don't know. Just I never really ima- like. Just I guess thought that he was like someone I've known for a while. Yeah. It's just like yeah, but it's crazy to think about. Well, it. and it's that whole small world type of stuff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it's it's really interesting. I think him. We had Jesse on, who now works at EB. Mm-hmm. Um, not that we're like getting any kickbacks from EB, except mm-hmm. I did get those headphones. Mm-hmm. I told him. Yeah. Um, and then he came on to do was, was it the, the Big Mouth review? No, it was the SNES. I think was that one. Oh or yeah, the NES. SNES. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was a couple of years ago too. Mm-hmm. So then we started. This is kind of this is gonna be a like a, a kind of two parter thing because this all started with your Instagram account, which we've mentioned on the show before is canceled. Mm-hmm. But in those first episodes that we started, we the very first episode we had a history of you kind of like how it started mm-hmm. and then how it led us to that first episode of the F word. Mm-hmm. And then for those of you who may not know, F word the E F part comes from entertain facts and not only is it a sweet name but it's also now paying homage to kind of what was it's so the i it'll, love you 3000 of the f word podcast you there you go. yeah exactly so it'll always exist it'll always be there and it'll always be like oh what's it mean now it still means entertain facts because entertain facts existed and then that's where you came up to me and you messaged me and it's probably because i think it was six months ago one of the classes that i was teaching for you guys i was like you should start a podcast or you should start a youtube channel off your thing and then like six or seven months later i remember you messaged me and you're like hey let's start this let's call Mm -hmm. it the f word and i'm like sweet but let's get into the instagram account and how you got 
from zero to what was the final tally before they clo- canceled you? 78.9. 78.9. Mm-hmm. Oh, so close to the 80. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Fucking. Honestly, as a fun fact, though, and just. Oh, uh, is it an entertaining fact? It kind of is. It's about entertaining <laughs> facts. On October 15th, 20, like this upcoming October 15th, would have been four years. Damn. Yeah, that's not a, that's not that. Yeah, it's not that long, long. But still, like, I started it in high school, and it's like weird to think that like the arc ended like prematurely, obviously. Before you, when you finished yeah. high school, mm-hmm. like right before I finished, start high school. your next chapter. Maybe it was just meant to be. I guess so. I wasn't honestly like I tell this to everyone. No one believes me. I wasn't very sad. I well, was like, I, I know you. I was disappointed. Sad. I'm like, really? Like, that's because honestly, it is a stupid reason. Like, I yeah. was totally justified to be doing what I was doing. Yeah, I think the only thing there was. My the reason you I thought that you got canceled or they took you like they took your the account memes. down, not the memes. Well, it was it oh, was I the ones some, that Nick and I. Had I think there were two you. memes that even I'm like, okay, these these were fucking like bad memes. Well, and and it wasn't like they were bad in the sense like, like any. It was just one of those things where like because enough people like in the, mm-hmm. the time now. Uh, people are just looking to cancel anybody, which, by the way, if anyone if anyone listens to Chris D'Elia's Congratulations podcast, episode 138, which came out today on YouTube, I think it came out yesterday on audio, mm-hmm. his first 10, 15 minutes is him talking about the cancel culture, and he's like, he compares it to dating somebody mm-hmm. that starts to change things you're like okay i'm on board we're dating we're going out for supper everything's really great i'm learning about you Mm -hmm. i'm caring about your thoughts and you're coming into my house and you're like does the end table need to be there and then you move all my shit around to service you and anything i say against that is an attack on me and you're ready to cancel like it was so funny so i highly recommend everybody take a look because obviously he's better at it than me Mm -hmm. um but i think in the mix of all that the stuff that you were putting out because you transitioned from the facts to the memes. Mm-hmm. And that's where I was just like, stick to your lane, right? But mm-hmm. that's me and that's you, right? But also, they've been cracking down on everybody for copyright in general. Mm-hmm. It's which, really stupid. They have like, stu- like stupidly strict rules. And I know how to get around it now because I remember on like Lazy Canadian, I did a whole like How I Met Your Mother, like good scenes. Saw that, yeah. And didn't get like, stru- like stricken down because all my posts. Did they were- comment on it? Like, no. did they send you an email saying, hey, be careful with this? Or Every single post would always get taken down on Entertain Facts, like, every single one, yeah. and have to reappeal it. But like, apparently, if you just zoom in and do the square format, it bypasses the copyright rules, which is how like a lot of pages get it by it. But I didn't know that at the time. So, are you talking like if the whole frame is one by one, and you zoom mm-hmm. into a smaller frame on Instagram, then it doesn't recognize it as the entire thing? Mm-hmm. So it's okay. like double clicking if you're like watching like Netflix and like kind of zooms in on the screen, so it fills right. everything. That's how it like it's supposed to. So like no black lines, but like you totally zoom, like looks good. Like hey, let me show you. Like you'll be able to see this, but mm-hmm. I don't know where it is actually. I post a lot. Like, For oh, those of you listening, which that's all you're doing. He's searching through his right phone here. and looking for so a just clip. just looks like this. Right. And yeah. it's zoomed in. It mm-hmm. doesn't show the whole frame. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so essentially you're just scaling. You're just cropping it. Mm-hmm. Just cropping it. So yeah. it just gets And then, you, so for all of you Instagram people out there, just crop your shit. Mm-hmm. If you want to get by, that's honestly, if you want to get past copyright for video, just make it a square and zoom it in and you get by it. So then before all of the all of this stuff, before F word and everything like that, Entertain Facts started. And obviously started from zero. Mm-hmm. So let's start from zero. Well, actually, go. there is prior to Entertain Facts, like I'd say B E F, before Entertain Facts, mm-hmm. just to like get my grounding because I didn't just like start an Instagram. Like this was my first attempt, I think. Yep. Around over, I think I did like over ten Instagram accounts prior to this. Like I started in like grade six or seven, which is just like, I think it's gonna sound cringy, but I don't care. I'm just owning it now. One was a Minecraft fact account. Mm. I think it's still up. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. I think it's Sleepy Craft or something. It was a stupid name, but it's like still up there. I'm pretty sure. I had some other like minor like meme pages for like YouTubers I do, but it was just like just stuff like that. And I always just stop. Like I always got like I think highest I ever got was 800, and that still was good. yeah, that was like that was it. And then I just kind of stopped. But fun fact about that actually, I met someone from Saskatoon, like some girl who had a Minecraft fan account, and I just like messaged her like three weeks ago. Because we haven't talked like, like since recently, then. like yeah. literally this three weeks ago. Yeah, three weeks ago. Because like we followed each other, and I'm like, this might sound weird because if like I'm wrong, it's just like I mean, it sound like a fucking clown. But like, did so you used to run a Minecraft fact account? And then yeah, we just started talking again, and it's like yeah, there's been like since like grade seven, I would say. So that's a lot. So you guys are gonna be building 
your love together? No, we're not building our love together. Oh. <laughs> this is not a How I Met Your Mother. You know, I used to make fun of Minecraft, but then, um, then the idea came to me. I was listening to, I forget who I was listening to, but they're like, my kids are thinking things in their heads and creating it on Minecraft. And at a glance, it looks like, what are you guys doing here? Mm-hmm. But when they get out into the real world, they're going to be raised with the belief that if I think it, I can build it. And so Minecraft could very well spawn the largest generation of engineers that and architects mm-hmm. that are going to, like, the world over. Like, they're just going to take over and have this imagination that, well, I played this game that allowed me to do that and mechanically showed me mm-hmm. how to do it. So, yeah, I've, I've completely taken out any issues I have because I've never had issues with video games anyways yeah, like no. I, obviously I play them I lo- I adore them but for some reason that one was like eh, that's stupid right well I always thought of it like as a Lego like just a Lego video game where you can just build yeah. things and that's like well and that's I and mean, if you ask most engineers for instance or people that build stuff they're like oh I remember having a set when I was a kid yeah. at Lego and always wanting more and more well this is the Lego that actually allowed you more things and no parent ever stepped on a Minecraft well, that we know of that we know of Unless, can you buy them physically? Well, I mean, there's Minecraft toys you can buy. Okay, maybe that one. Yeah, no. But I don't really, think it hurt like, as much. Yeah, not not nearly enough. Unless they stepped on the TV. Like, unless you push the TV over, it broke, then the parents stepped on it, and then fuck. But in that case, their whole foot's fucked. But here's the thing. If you, like, step on a broken TV, I feel no sympathy for you because, like, how the fuck do you not see a broken TV on the ground? Well, especially the old ones, which no one has the old ones anymore. Oh, my God, that break the floor. That would break your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything about it. Because then that thing's deep, and those guts. I used to have one, like a big, big, oh, yeah. big one. It was yeah. well, what happened. Um, yeah, my buddy has one for his daughter now, mm-hmm. so she watches D- Disney movies on VCR. Yeah, so no. she he's actually raising her now to watch movies on a VCR, which is amazing. She's gonna go to her friends. I just watched this new VCR tape. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh, what's a VCR? It's gonna come back, man. Everything's gonna eventually come back. Gonna be a VCR I'm trying to streaming. think. I know we're veering off here, but I was trying to think of something. I was listening to the radio today. Mm-hmm. And I've been listening to it more for like just news radio mm-hmm. stuff because I'm finding now when everyone's like, oh, read the newspaper. It'll get you, quote unquote, informed, right? Which for anyone who's curious, a little fun fact, informed means information. So you're in information with the rest of the world on information that you're getting. Um, but anyways, I was thinking, just like I was thinking about Minecraft, when it comes to the music that's coming out today. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much of it you listen to. I don't listen to any of it, so like I have the new no stuff, idea. Like not really. But I honestly legitimately feel that a lot of the music that's being produced for mainstream is actual garbage. Oh, yeah. And and not even in the sense that like an 80s parent will listen to sev- like uh, music, or sorry, a 70s parent will listen to music from the 80s when synth was coming out and thinking like, that's not music, this mm-hmm. is music, and saying, oh, all the music on this radio is crap. I don't remember when the radio actually came out, but I think it was around the 70s and 80s. And then subsequently like, an 80s parent listening to 90s stuff saying that it's crap and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, we have to wait 10 years later to no. actually see if it was crap, but it I honestly is. legitimately feel like we're in an era where there's just so much crap coming out. Well, for me, like I guess my like viewpoint is more like objective just because I am like in that generation, like the majority loves the music. I fucking hate it. I hate it. I, 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 I can't. can't. No, it just all this it just I can't understand what they're saying. Mm. Like 6 9 I, I have no clue why people like him. He what? just screams into the mic, and that is it. It's not music. There's no flow. He just screams loudly and does yeah. so many bad... All these people do so many bad things, and no one gives a fuck. Well, they're all talking about drugs. Mm-hmm. Drugs, sex. Which is so weird, but they're talking about drugs in like an era where drugs is the worst thing. Mm-hmm. So one of the parks near Soph's parents, like my parent, my mother and father-in-law's place, mm-hmm. an ex-cop that lives in that area was like walking his dog, and he found a backpack. And obviously, being a cop, he knows. He grabbed it with branches. Mm-hmm. Because fentanyl that they're lacing all these drugs with is so bad that if you touch it, you could potentially die. Mm, fuck. Like, and this stuff they're putting in these drugs that these kit that these artists are saying to take. Not all artists, but mm-hmm. some specific ones. And it's just like, what are you fucking talking about? Mm-hmm. Like, at least I know some of the old stuff. At least when you're just talking hip hop, for instance. Well, it was just weed. That was pretty much it. But not even that. Like they were talking about, it was talking about gang culture, but they were talking about the culture itself. Some of them, yes, glorified it, mm-hmm. like shooting somebody down on the corner and all that stuff. But then you have iced tea. It's like five in the morning, cop, uh, burglars at my door, Glock 45 in my dresser drawer. That was less of a, of a, oh, this is great stuff. More of like, I needed that Glock in my dresser drawer 
because these burglars are coming consistently at 5 a.m. And then I'm going to get blamed by the cops for having a gun and all that. Like it was, there was just something different about it. And especially because I'm more into older Mm -hmm. stuff in general. But I'm just, it's just weird. Well, there was one guy, I don't know, I forget his name, but he got arrested. And he wrote, released a song called Murder On My Mind. And it was a song where he talks about uh, just like uh, shooting his friend accidentally on the streets. Mm-hmm. And he actually did. Like the song was based on reality. Like he was retelling the events in a song. W N Y N W Melly. Yes. Murder on my mind. Yeah. And then he did that. No one knew about it. They just thought it was a song. He released a sequel from the, his friend's perspective. Yeah. So it was. He was milking his friend's death for fucking money. And people were listening to it as the case was going on, as he was getting charged, saying this is a good song. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't deny that some of the beats are good, mm-hmm. but I mean, you do, you do have to go past it. But even then, some of the lyrics, the, the the rhythms and melodies that they're putting together, I just can't get into it. Like, I'll, I'll listen to some of it because my goddaughter listens to a lot of it. Um, but I'm just sitting. I'm like, I, I honestly think that. It's crap, and it's not even that I'm some old fucker now. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm only 31, but still, like, you know, what the younger kids and their, like, the teens are listening to, like, your mm-hmm. generation of friends. I'm like, I actually think that this won't age very well, and no. and me saying this isn't me being an old fucker. It's more so, like, it's actually legitimately not that good enough to stand mm-hmm. the test of time because... No. The parents from the, like the '90s, the '80s, and '70s that complained about their kids' music—they were mm-hmm. wrong because a lot of those songs are still huge today. Well, Eminem was just one example, like old songs like that that are still like relevant as fuck. Like people like love mm-hmm. all his old sh- like songs, but like I cannot imagine Six Nine having like I'm sure like I'm not gonna say like all his songs are bad because I've listened to all of them. Like I'm, not, I'm sure he's not gonna have multiple songs people look back at like oh that's still a good song. Like maybe one yeah, or two. It depends. I think the big thing is. And this is how I'm going to start tying it back in. I, I promise. Um, but anybody that listens to the deep dives know that we there's tangents about. I think it's this thing we've talked about. I think we talked about it on the show too, where it's really hard to cut through the noise. Mm-hmm. And for and when you do, you have a very small window to do anything there. Mm-hmm. So, I release a song tomorrow. I have tomorrow and maybe a week from the time I release it to make. An impact. Now, mm-hmm. if I'm, let's say, a Drake, yeah, then got, people yeah. are gonna like listen to it all summer because mm-hmm. I'm a big name and stuff. But if I'm on the lower tier, even Drake's album Scorpion, which I didn't care for, I thought there was twelve really good tracks on there, not twenty a twenty four mm-hmm. you know track album. I still buy CDs too, so that's a thing for me. I don't think you can last enough, and you keep having to pump out things at a pace that obviously the faster you go, you're compromising something. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to get back to the other accounts that you had, Mm -hmm. but at least with the Minecraft one, did you get an understanding right off the bat that I have a lot of BS to cut through? Well, it wasn't like for all these like, like pages, I guess I started up a lot of it was like a lot, everything I did like went to entertain facts. So for like, obviously whatever it was called, my Minecraft fact account, mm-hmm. like the layout I used for that one was more or less the same one I used for the start of video game True Facts, which was Entertain Facts, it's a different name. So it was just how to like stand your, like stand out, how to do things, like how to like actually know, because right now I'm also marketing for like my aunt who's a realtor. Mm-hmm. I'm not actually getting paid to do it. It's not just like, you know, whatever. Sweet. But it's one of those things where I like from all these years of doing things and like knowing how to do it, like knowing what to do. It's not a big secret either. Like I can like, I, the biggest thing everyone asks me, like how you get followers, is just use hashtags. That's it. Like that's the thing I learned a lot. I'd always interact with other people too. Like I wouldn't go around begging for someone to follow me, but I actually like a bunch of like people's posts like in a row. That was the biggest thing I'd always do, and they'd always follow me back, even if I didn't follow them. You okay? So, so I'd go to your account, like say, thing, yeah. and I would like like twenty pics in yeah. a row, and like they notice because obviously it's hard not to notice, and they'd like click yeah. follow. So I'd go to like Minecraft, like a hashtag Minecraft, and for like an hour straight, just do that to a bunch of different accounts, and I'd gain crazy, well, crazy, quote unquote. Well, when we were doing YouTube, and I was like racking my brain on how to get our videos seen, mm-hmm. that was the one thing that kept coming up. It's like going over and commenting on other people's posts, but not being like, not commenting as in, hey, follow me, but actually like actually leaving a comment, mm-hmm. and then 
seeing what comes back. If you get one, great. If not, like, but actually leaving a comment there mm-hmm. so that you start engaging with the people. And if the comment's good enough, I know I've done this before, the people will look at who's sent it and maybe click on their profile mm-hmm. and then take a look. I do that for like a lot of my like comments, even on the Lazy Canadian, I always like look at who comments. Like I look at their profile, I look at like anything like that and like, yeah. Do you think it's better that they've gotten rid of the numbers? Like for now likes? it just shows the fir- one person who liked a second name and then and others. I think so. Like I just think, I don't think it really matters. Like, I don't really care. I remember there was one day though, uh, for some reason, my Instagram showed me all the likes. So this was like really like douche, I know, but I just was curious. So I went to see someone else's uh, grad p- photo just because at this time, like I just disliked this person just to see who got more likes and I got like 50 more likes. So I was pretty happy. But Shut I think in that sense, face. it is a good thing because I don't like you shouldn't like really care. Like, it's not a big deal. And like a lot of people do focus way too much on it and they actually like do care. Well, of course. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's almost like your currency. Mm-hmm, like exactly. a like is akin to a dollar but too many people especially in like today's age like of my generation i guess they like use likes in for like social media as actual like praise and they like yeah. live like said, off it, of it. it's the equivalent of opening your wallet mm-hmm. and the one guy has ten dollars and you've got two one hundred dollar bills mm-hmm. right and he's sitting there with his 10 likes and you're sitting there with 200 and you're like i'm better than you but i think that's that's just how things are evolving mm-hmm. until they eventually devolve. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and I don't even know if it gets to a point where, because it's really interesting. So before, if you're looking at it in back in the day, and I can, and by back in the day, I'll say, you know, 2000s, mm-hmm. where your reputation meant something. So you were getting likes in the in the sense of like, if somebody asked, hey, who that, who's that person? And then they'll start asking a bunch of people and mm-hmm. you'll gain a reputation. Or if you're a restaurant owner, right, people will come there, then you'll know other people yeah. and then eventually people will start knowing you. That was kind of like a physical like that you got from everybody mm-hmm. there. But it was there on the spot and you're hoping that it generated because those dislikes travel just as fast. Mm-hmm. That's right. Bad reviews f- travel faster and are more volatile than a good review. Well, I always look at bad reviews when I'm like ever buying something first. Well, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and which is weird. Like, I look for the good ones, but I look at how many good ones to. Well, ones I do both. Like, I, I start off with the bad ones just to see, like, okay, well, let's see, like, what the absolute like worst thing that could happen is, and then I like yeah. the good ones. But I mean, the number of likes there ended up placing you at a certain point. Like, you you reached a certain status with certain people based on like let's say the fifty people that had asked about you. Mm-hmm. You're now at a platform with fifty people kind of propping you up, mm-hmm. or pushing you down you know whichever way and it's almost like that's just translated over to the digital world and because the volume of people goes from 50 to 50 million let's say Mm -hmm. it's way too much for us to handle like i was talking about last week and this is the part where it was cutting out because i remember when i was editing the Mm -hmm. video i can i noticed it just skipped so for anybody listening last week sorry for the skipping uh looks like this one's going pretty good i've been looking yeah it looks like it's Um, so good I, I was talking about how we are infants in our capacity or our morality compared to the technology that we have available to us. Mm-hmm. And now I think, you know, infants or young children, if you beat down on them hard enough, like they'll cower and they'll develop problems. Like mm-hmm. I developed anxiety over our fucking YouTube and podcast mm-hmm. when we were doing it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I had to, I had to stop. Mm-hmm. And just like you said, like it didn't bother you when you stopped when Entertain Facts was it was taken from you mm-hmm. as opposed to you deciding it. But when I decided to stop doing YouTube videos for a while and mm-hmm. just focus on the audio, I was like, mm-hmm. like a huge game changer. Well, yeah, just for YouTube, it's just I don't know. Like I could never crack YouTube. Like if someone asked me how to grow on YouTube, I have no idea. It's just one of those things that I think it's more fucked than Instagram is in terms of like content getting out and like people seeing it. Because even like people with big amount of followings, like they'll have like times where people won't get notified if their video gets uploaded yeah. and it's just super shitty. So for Instagram today, like I was, I would say in like the golden age of Instagram where it was like easy to gain followers. Just if I was like from starting from zero to like now, like if I didn't, if I wasn't gifted the amount of followers for lazy Canadian, mm-hmm. like there would, it would have been so fucking hard to like do that. Cause like meme pages, like meme pages are just an oversaturated market. I didn't want to do superhero shit anymore just because it's kind of like, spent like four years doing it and there's like everyone that's also stupidly oversaturated because it's just either bad posts or just like 
self entertained facts did that I got deleted for, so I didn't want to do that. But yeah, like for you, like for the effort podcast, it's like for their, that page to grow is so much stupider now because the likes getting taken away is a good thing, I'd say. Yeah. But if they fix the algorithm, it'd be like, that's fine. It's like a perfect like combo. Well, we I haven't even been consistent with it. Like mm-hmm. we got a lot of, we got more people that followed the videos that you made than any post I do. Mm-hmm. But my posts are just literally a poster. Mm-hmm. Like it's like Twitter too. Um, there were some podcasters that were tweeting back and forth and they're like, well, Twitter's pretty much this dead zone because podcasters are following other podcasters mm-hmm. to help support them and liking and retweeting yeah. and all that. But how many of those other podcasters are actually listening to their stuff to boost their numbers too? Mm-hmm. Right. So that's why it was so cool when that one podcast actually reached out and like, hey, listen to our stuff. I'll listen to yours. If you like it, then leave us a review. If not, let us know. And the same thing I said, if you like what you hear, mm-hmm. like don't just leave a five star review. We yeah. don't know each other. So it's cool. But if you do whatever you don't like, then let me know. Like be, mm-hmm. we, we were both very honest and mm-hmm. we just they happened to like it and give us like they five star liked it. Mm-hmm. Right. So which is which is really cool, yeah. which is almost the equivalent of commenting on another person's post. Mm-hmm. But we're so inconsistent. And what I understand of the algorithm is that it it values consistency. Mm-hmm. And so because we're essentially once, maybe twice a week. Yeah, that's why. Like we're only at one hundred and thirty eight. We haven't started it that long, but we're mm-hmm. only at 138, mm-hmm. right? Whereas my personal account has 755 people on there. Mm-hmm. But that's because it was a personal account. I would post other videos, especially when I was yeah. in real estate, like com- comedic real estate mm-hmm. videos and stuff. And a bunch of other things that, but I gained followers faster there than on this one. Okay. And yeah. so it's it's just like a, yeah, right now it's going to be, it's going to take forever. But even YouTube, mm-hmm. we've been on, we've been at between 900 we're at 970, I think, right now. Mm-hmm. And we've been doing YouTube for, what, three years now? But I think we also, like, we had Two? a good, like, decent, like, if you have a break, like, a long enough break, like, it's just going to, like, halt everything. Which well, is, like... Exactly. We, I think it was almost And the fact that year. we didn't lose, Dude. like, then we gained. Yeah. Which was, like, something that, like, shouldn't have happened, but it doesn't matter. Like, I'm not complaining, but, like, still, like, that's just, like, whatever. Well, I'll tell you why. Because um, the one... The highest video we have, I think, is oh, yeah, 70,000. Like, those videos kept going. I noticed that. And yeah. it's still going because season three came out. So mm-hmm. people are like, oh, what's this money heist thing? And they're going back and checking out my season one review. I'm getting comments on season two review. And the I had a spoiler review mm-hmm. um, on a, on a uh, whatever, this big spoiler thing. And I was going to do a third one, which I still might. But now I'm like, oh, it's been too long since it's come out. But mm-hmm. I still could. Mm-hmm. I just don't have it in me. Like the one time we were going to record another episode and I had it propped up and ready to go and I did seven takes and for some reason it just wasn't sticking. I couldn't remember names. I couldn't get into a flow to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to do another one too, but I'm just like, I I don't know. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, I just don't think I have it in me to do the video. I'd rather just prop up the camera and start releasing just the video of our podcast. Just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. I think we're, and then eventually get back into it. But I just I just need to find it again mm-hmm. that I actually want to do it. Well, I think honestly, reviews I'd say like in a sense like actually just doing a standard review, like they're nice, but it's also like another thing that's like super oversaturated. So like if we just do it on the show, yeah, it's just like natural because it's just there. We can just take it out and just upload it. Yeah, but like doing Which I those- was doing for a while too. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly, the the audio podcast just releasing audio on YouTube, mm-hmm. it's been gaining more views. Mm-hmm. At least people like clicking on it. I've been noticing that. But I mean, again. We, our content as a podcast is oversaturated. Mm-hmm. There's a million podcasts out there talking about movies and comics and all of that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and so that's, that's something that like even us, we have to f- try to find and navigate and, and, and steer off from, which I'm glad, like if you look from our first episode to now, mm-hmm. it's such a change. And even regrettably, we got rid of the live show, but at the same mm-hmm. time, I knew the live show it wasn't hindering us because when we had entertained facts, it was fun because mm-hmm. we had people on exactly, there. Exactly, yeah. But now that we don't, it's actually more fun for the three of us because mm-hmm. like you well, mentioned- Well, it's more natural. Like, no offense to anyone because like Arturo is great. Like, I'm glad we met him. He's our dude, man. Mm-hmm. But it's just like- Oh, Arturo, by the way, if you're listening to this, I got a t-shirt getting made. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get us new- I got this new okay. t-shirt. It's getting made. And Arturo, you're getting one. So I'm going to message you. Just hang tight. But it's just like also just like the constant like having to stop fill people in what's going on. It's just like yeah. it's just you know, there's like like last week's podcast like just keeps cutting. You just, things keep cutting off and it's kinda like just you like lose track of shit or like you feel bad if you neglect someone for too long and then you have to like yeah. make sure they feel acknowledged. Yeah. Did you ever find that with the people like so as you so you went from the video game one, you mm-hmm. had Minecraft video game one and then 
You had one more before entertain facts? No. So more. for like, I think, I don't know. I would have made it in grade nine, I think. So 2015 was grade nine. So like from grade eight, like I know for a fact I didn't have like one like leading into high school. So there's like a break. I had a break before I like made video game true facts. But there was just, I had like lots of different ones that would like survive like a couple months like at that. So like one was on an anime like Attack on Titan fan page. One was just a straight up meme page for like c or shit like that. So there were like a, I, 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 there was like so many of the same. Like I had a lot of Attack on Titan because I think I got locked out of them a lot because I just kept forgetting the passwords because there weren't that function where you just like, you had to log out each time and do it. Oh. Yeah. Where I suppose now you yeah, just, now you can just click a button. And, yeah. yeah, that's what I do. Which I is used such, to a, have such a nice function. Such a nice function now. Yeah. But yeah, so after that, so I made video game true facts. And I didn't like I never told anyone about it for like the first bit. Uh people started finding out though, like naturally, because I like I never kept it a secret. Like even with entertained facts, like, it was never like a secret. Like I wouldn't go around like being a I, at least I hope I didn't. Like in my mind, like I kind of like think I didn't do it, or like I wouldn't go around boasting, like saying I have entertained facts, like this is me. But like I'd always keep it on the down low, but my friends like started finding out. They started liking it and shit like that. Uh, so then, yeah, I just got bored of video games. I just stopped playing them and I changed it to Entertain Facts when the Civil War trailer dropped for mm. Spider Man. Like it was that, like I think a day before, I think it was April 26th or the 28th. Like, like somewhere that very between first those. trailer? Yeah. Like with Spider Man? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Because I remember the logo. Trailer. He was my logo when I first like started. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was just that. And it's just, I guess that's when I started. I think I changed when I had under 10K. So it was kind of like, well, not a big deal. Like lots of people unfollowed me and shit like that just because they didn't want, I don't know why. I, I never understood that because it was like, I still covered video games when I like made the transition. Mm-hmm. It was just like everything I was covering, but people just didn't want to follow me. So I just kind of did that. And I think the biggest reason why my fact page was actually like, I would consider like one of the better like movie fact pages was just because I actually like wasn't just like a stone wall who just like said facts and that was it. Like I'd always like roast the fuck out of like people that would like try and hate on me or just like make trouble in comments and I'd be like interacting with followers like I respond to all my DMs like I do shit like that where I wouldn't just be like a douche big like a lot of like big, I'm too big to yeah exactly a lot of yeah, like yeah. big pages like don't respond to like DMs which is I don't understand why because I always like loved responding to DMs because it's kind of like quote unquote fan mail it was just like yeah because I like people like were got some people got really excited that would respond like stupidly excited and it was kind of like nice like to think that like you'd have that kind of like power to make someone's like day like that or just just by saying like what's up well even when you came up to me with a bell mm-hmm. and yeah. like he wanted to meet me i'm like why the fuck does he want to meet me like, mm-hmm. like he wanted to meet nick too he was sad yeah man. and nick wasn't there mm-hmm. yeah i wish he was but I, even that like little interaction mm-hmm. i was like hey man how's it going whatever mm-hmm. like it was nothing right mm-hmm. like and and it doesn't seem and it's not like even that we're at any point but mm-hmm. to him like he's like, oh, I just want to meet this guy that I've mm-hmm. like listened to or I've watched on the podcast and stuff, which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. And out of at a super super small scale, well, it's, it's just nice. It's just like a nice feeling, like just like going. Just it's like, like meeting meeting the owner of a restaurant too. Mm-hmm. Like I know I've done that before. Like I've been lucky enough to know a lot of really good chefs, especially when I was living in Calgary. Mm-hmm. And so they'd introduce me to their head chef, and I'd be like, oh, dude, I've heard about you. You like you're fucking awesome mm-hmm. and everything like that. And it was it's it's super exciting to meet people that you think would wouldn't even bother talking to you. Mm-hmm. And I think that has a lot to do with it. Yeah. So for me, like, I guess entertain facts, but like just overall, like, I guess, cause on the journey, like there were like definitely like rough, there's like a lot of rough patches, like just patches. Sorry. Just like kind of losing, not losing. I never was going backwards. I don't actually, I might've been, I think there was a three week period where I was like slowly going backwards, like nothing drastic, but just when Instagram changed their algorithm was like when I started like getting just like hits because I only did photos. Mm-hmm. So then I changed the videos because likes were still a thing at that time. Mm-hmm. So like they wouldn't get any likes, but these videos would get like crazy amount of views. Yeah. People are just lazy and they just fucking like scroll and cancel the view. So I started doing videos more and more for video facts and this was more like just better looking and just like easy or I guess more practical because if I ever like want to do a fact on a scene, I could just show the scene, not just a random photo and just kind of like. In this scene, this happens. Well, it provides you the exact. It provides mm-hmm. you both context, both yeah. sides of the of the like the fact. Mm-hmm. So I just like started doing more videos, and then after, because like I well, like I enjoy doing facts, and like it wasn't like I just stopped hated doing facts. It was just I ran out of facts to do because I always hated reposting facts mm-hmm. because I knew like lots of bigger fact pages like they'll repost a fact every week, and it's just kind of like there's no like layover. So if I ever reposted a fact, it would be like three months at least in between me posting it but i always felt like bad doing because i kind of like i don't want to just see the same shit over and over in my feed like i wouldn't want my followers to do it either 
But we were already into enter- or at the F word at yeah, that point too, right? Yeah, near the videos, it was the F word. Yeah, because I remember when you started doing the videos and you were working out layouts and mm-hmm. stuff, and we're like, oh, those videos look cool. Like mm-hmm. it, was, it was, it was sweet, and that was a big one too. Because when I first heard about Entertain Facts, because mm-hmm. I had no idea mm-hmm. that you were doing it, um, I heard it from Soph. Because Soph's like, oh, Anthony's got this account that he does, and it's like 20,000 followers or mm-hmm. something like that. And then so when I saw you a couple weeks after, mm-hmm. that's when I was like, dude, you should start a YouTube thing. Because mm-hmm. that's when YouTube was like, it was like getting huge. Mm-hmm. Like, this is when Screen Junkies was like massive, and mm-hmm. Collider was massive, and everyone was hitting like their million dollars. It was before, subscriber before stuff. the adpocalypse, I think is like what YouTubers call it. Like, Well, the, the adpocalypse was recent. Mm-hmm. Like that was the Vox Adpocalypse thing that was going on. This is like what when we twenty uh, seventeen. This was like three, two or three years before we started. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, I don't think so. Two cause... years before we started, or from today, like two or three oh, years okay. ago, today, from today, kind yeah. of thing. But like all of these guys were huge. Like I remember Jeremy Johns, let's say, was had moved over to Collider, and he was one of their hosts there. The the guy John Campia who was leading it, like all of those guys, they were kind of and, sc- and obviously Screen Junkies with their movie fights, like they were getting Kevin Kevin Smith and at Comic Con they would have their own movie fights panel, and mm-hmm. so the nerd culture was like at its peak, mm-hmm. and then now it's like, you know, yeah, dwindling. Mm-hmm. And but at the time I was like, this is what you need to do because this is what everybody's fucking doing. You got to get on it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, mm-hmm. and then so we were doing this stuff, but that's when you transition to. Mm-hmm. So for the F word though, I know, I think we did mention it like the first episode, but yeah, like, but it's not on anchor. So oh, okay. I don't know how many people have actually listened to that first episode. Cause that's when we were on Libsyn. Mm. Oh yes. And we were using Libsyn and it went, oh, it was only sending it to Apple, mm-hmm. but we had no idea what the hell was going on. We we're just like uploading it and hope fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. Whereas anchor has been a godsend. Yeah, no. So for the F word podcast, this, I made this name before Gordon Ramsay had his show. Mm-hmm. So this was something I already like thought of, like I had before I even told. Like, oh, yeah. This was like, it. yeah. So we started it in, I want to say, like June of 2017. Something like that. I tried in December, November or December of 2016. Okay. That was the first attempt. So it was with two other comic book pages. I forget their names. They're both not active anymore. Uh, but it was, it was a joke because it was funny because at the time, like, one of these guys had like 50,000 followers. And he's like, well, like, they were just joking, like, we're on your podcast. We have more followers than you do. And I was like, but now I, I surpass them both. So it was like mm-hmm. a nice accomplishment. But yeah, we tried it. And I met, it was so stupid because I had a shitty laptop. I used Skype for the call. And then uh, we had this just recorder. And their audio was like, you got to hear them. For mm-hmm. mine, my audio didn't work. So it was just like, it was, it was shitty. It wasn't good, like, good quality. But like you could hear what they were saying. And then it was just like long pauses where just silence. Where you would be. Yeah, yeah where I would yeah, be talking. Yeah. So we just didn't do it. And then I was just kind of laid off the idea. But then, yeah, Nick, I think Nick was talking about it and he wanted to like do it really good. And I'm like, oh, I don't really know how to do it. And then we just came and like recruited you like the Nick Fury from Iron Man scene. Yeah. Well, and I had no fucking idea either. Mm-hmm. The only the only thing I knew was a general structure of how other people are doing it. Mm-hmm. And I knew I wanted to do reviews. Mm-hmm. But the thing was, a thing I quickly realized is my review or my movie acumen was only at a higher level than the people around me who didn't have a high enough knowledge on movies to begin mm-hmm. with. So I was like the five foot five, or I was like a what a, a six foot four basketball player mm-hmm. against with a team of like four foot people. So just by sheer virtue of being taller than everybody i was a quote-unquote better basketball player Mm -hmm. but maybe i was missing every three-pointer i was doing everything so i think the fact that a lot of other people weren't as involved in that culture as Mm -hmm. i was made me think that i could do it because everyone's like we know when people don't know how to do something oh you should try it you should do Mm -hmm. this like you'd be perfect for it but what's their litmus test for it like what's Mm -hmm. their basic knowledge of something going into it but anyways, yeah, like that's how you guys came in. I had to look everything up. Mm-hmm. Like I went on YouTube to look up everything. Well, we still have these microphones, mm-hmm. which are still regarded as really good microphones for podcasts. I like them. It's just like a nice like aspect of just talking to an actual mic. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, and we so we had the microphones. I bought that sound mixer, which I'm bringing that sound mixer back in play mm-hmm. because it's not this laptop. Were we not using it before? We were using it in the beginning, mm-hmm. but ever since I got this preamp, I've been using that. However that thing will be even better because these microphones are both XLR and mm-hmm. um, uh, auxiliary. Okay. And they work 
just fine with auxiliary as X and XLRs. Mm -hmm. But that allows me, that would allow me to just work the, the do it better mm -hmm. because right now you and VAS when you're doing it are on one, oh, one wave. wavelength. Okay. Whereas oh, yeah. there, I'd, but I'd have to find out how to do three wavelengths because mm -hmm. Audacity isn't that easy to work with. Mm. So at least for that, if I had another program, like um, I think it's a Final Cut or something okay. like that, that would give me the option mm -hmm. to run the three wavelengths. But anyways, all that shit, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So, But I thought I did based on that. That's why when you guys recruited me, I'm like, fuck yeah, we could do this. This is going to be the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. But Lots of, A lot of people fuck, like, think wrong? it's so easy, just to, especially with entertain facts. Like the biggest thing is like, so I guess like we can just like backtrack just a bit like for the high school. Like when I like, like honestly, people hated me. Mm -hmm. Like they, like, when they found out. Oh, about they hated facts, me. And yeah. it was like really uncomfortable because I was like one of those guys that was like, not like popular, but like I was very like well, not very, but like I was well known. Where like if you said my name, like people would know who I was mm -hmm. and like I'd know people. I just wouldn't like talk to many people. But I remember my French teacher, uh, he wanted, he ordered clothing and he wanted to like take a photo. So I went to his cap class to ask him to like send me the photo. And cap is just like homeroom, I guess, like mm -hmm. for like more like common terms. And I walk in and he's wearing the sweater. People are huddled around his desk and he's showing my page. Mm -hmm. And I walk in, right? And just death stares, like from all these people. Like that's like he has that page. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I, and people hated me. Like people were talking shit. Like this was around twenty thousand followers, mm -hmm. and I just didn't really care. I was like, whatever. Like they're just like I knew it was just born out of jealousy, just because like not to be that guy, but like lots of people like would want it, and I like understood. Like I have something like not lots of people have. Like I was like it was a different thing, and it was a local thing for mm -hmm. them. Like whenever you look at something with large numbers, you never think it has anything to do with your geographical area you mm -hmm. think it's like some kid in new york that's exposed to everything and you're like oh wait no it's literally the guy next to me mm -hmm. so i don't know when it happened because it was like, kind of like a, just a rather like fast drop off but people just kind of like stopped hating and they just like they, at my old school at my high school like there was a fuck ton of support for entertain facts like teachers were in on it students were in on it like we had teachers even when we started the f word that mm -hmm. were listening do they still listen do you well i mean you're out of school uh, now, but. i think they watch the live show on entertain facts yeah so like i don't think they like made the transition over yeah yeah i think they like our facebook page though so they like see like the video and shit like that mm -hmm. but yeah they were like they loved like entertain facts teachers loved it like students like loved it like they were like i think i sold around 20 sweaters in one order like at one time so like just people around mm -hmm. and it was just like, it was like, just nice to see people like not being a dick and just like actually like supporting something you would do in that like endeavor did it ever mess with you mentally like, I know you're saying, like, it was no big deal or whatever, mm -hmm. but, like, I tell people when they ask me about the YouTube thing, I had to stop because I was getting, mm -hmm. like, actual legit anxiety. Like, and it, all three things that I was trying at that time were failing spectacularly. Mm -hmm. At least I f thought they were failing spectacularly. So I had to stop because mm -hmm. it was messing with my head. Did any of that happen either when you had that three-week drop or when you had people hating you or just adjusting to the rise of it? Like, were there points of there where you were just, like you know, on the brink of feeling like you were going to mm -hmm. lose it in one way, shape, or form. Well, the only, like, notable thing I can remember, like, where I was ever, like, just hating everything was, I would say, like, it was actually, like, this year, like, right near, like, before it got deleted, like, that whole, like, month of May was, like, probably one of the worst months I can remember. Like, that was, like, leading up to finals and shit like that. Just everything was, like, changing. I had to write two MC scripts. One was fake. One was real. Like, all, like, it was, like, I think in total 20 pages of like script I had to write uh I had to like do uh, there's like, a bunch of shit I got in a car accident because someone hit me oh you never even mentioned that did you mention that I think so I was backing out of a like parking lot and someone hit me I still have to deal with this I'm not even mad that she hit me I'm just mad that I have to deal with SGI mm. and I'm still doing it like they're supposed to call me for this like to get my uh demerits taken off but they yeah. still haven't done it so I have to like call them back or something I guess but sidetrack I got um Somebody hit and run me uh, in Calgary at the mall. I was mm -hmm. going, I was there in between semesters and I was just going to the mall. Someone had hit my car, had no idea, didn't leave anything or whatever. It took me six months. I had to do a statement with the police and I had to do a state, two statements or something with SGI because they just wouldn't believe that they wouldn't believe any of it. I'm like, mm -hmm. I was there and they hit my car. It was in a parking lot. What's going to happen? Like, how else am I supposed to yeah, explain no. to you that at one point my car was fine and then the next one it wasn't? Like, 
It's honestly, I was I wasn't even mad that she hit my car. That she hit my car. It was just the fact that I had to deal with all this bullshit, like yeah. on top of everything else I was doing. That's what made the the car her hitting you even worse. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't even like mad. I'm just I was just like literally like, what the fuck because I didn't eat that day. I remember. <laughs> And I, like, oh, I couldn't even go angry. home and eat because she had to, f- I was fucking waiting for her because at the time I didn't know, like, any better, but, like, because obviously I was never in a car accident before, but, like, she's like, my dad's coming and I just, like, needed her information, but I was kind of, like, so mad. I'm like, what fucking ever? Just like, hurry the fuck up. Should have had a Snickers. Oh, I guess so. But, yeah, when I'm hangry, oh, I am fucking angry. Like, I'm Ari Gold angry. Oh. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, at that time, it was just, like, hard to like kind of make posts like make new because i had to make new posts every day it's not like a meme page where yeah. i can just steal shit right like i gotta f- make this shit for me uh so i was just like doing that every night and then i had like just personal issues with just like this girl i was talking to and it just it all kind of like weighed on like just start building 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 mm-hmm. and then it got deleted and i was kind of like well that sucks like i was like obviously disappointed but i'm like it's one less thing I have to worry about. So it's kind of yeah. like, that's nice. So it just took more stress off and shit like that. But people like, some like people actually like really sad. Well, for sure. Like I, I was getting a, I got a couple of messages through the F word Instagram saying, Hey, mm-hmm. what happened to the page? I'm like, Hey, it's getting appealed or whatever. Go over to lazy Canadian, find mm-hmm. it or whatever there. Um, but I mean, like, it's like anything. If you, once the show ends, mm-hmm. you know, people still talk about their old shows. Like people still talk about the Sopranos. It's like, okay guys, it's over. Yeah. Anything that they felt was a part of their lives on a daily basis Mm -hmm. has a big impact. That's why fans, for instance, get so volatile because, you know, it's it's easy to say you guys are just fans like you guys are just sitting here watching these things. And yes, you're investing your money in, but you guys aren't creating it. Why are you taking ownership Mm -hmm. and agency on this product? But you got to understand that when and we don't I know I don't until after the fact when it's part of people's lives that they're looking every day on, let's say they, the reason, let's say some of the people, the the reason they go on Instagram is to see those posts. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I can imagine when that goes, it's the same thing as losing something else you've done on a regular basis. Like mm-hmm. if I go in and I get a ham and mustard sandwich from this place on the corner every single day. And mm-hmm. then the one day I go there and that place is gone, it's closed down. Uh, that is going to be a bad day for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't have that place now, but, I remember there was that place when I was living in Calgary because mm-hmm. we would walk everywhere. And so a lot of those institutions that were there that were part of the day-to-day, when they left, I was heartbroken. Mm-hmm. Like, it was not a good day. And I, it always falls on the day that's shitty anyways, mm-hmm. just like it was for you and just like it was for maybe that one other person that was looking for your page mm-hmm. and they can't find it. Well, I remember I was I never said this to anyone because I knew it was just like I was just like it was the purpose of being a dick. But uh, it was that grad. So I was emceeing like my prom and I started off with like, I think I mentioned this, just talking about my lost friend and how I mm. miss him so much. It was entertain facts. Mm-hmm. And I've had, I had a couple of people come to me like, I didn't know it got deleted. Like I loved your page. You could see it all the time. Like I'd always look at it mm. and I'm like, you didn't notice for a month. It wasn't there. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> you loved it. You're a huge fan. You never noticed it was just gone. Well, they probably knew it was there and they probably you're using, there's this theory I was listening to called the remembered self. Mm-hmm. So they're basing it off of the self, the, the, the version of themselves that they remember mm-hmm. seeing the entertained fact. Well, I, I, that's happened to me too before where I've like, could have sworn I saw something I never did. And it's just kind of like, if it's in your daily routine, like that's why I never like bust anyone about it. Cause like if it's in your daily routine, yeah. you just kind of expect it to be there. And if it's not, especially on Instagram, where it's like not as noticeable, like if I'm like going somewhere and like it's closed down, that's mm-hmm. noticeable. But on Instagram, if it's some, if a page is gone, like I won't know. Question: Is casual still around? Because mm-hmm. I haven't seen anything. I don't from think he's him. posted in a while, but like I know, like, like he still follows. Like we follow each other on my personal and shit, and he follows Lazy Canadian. Well, so. I know he follows my personal mm-hmm. and and the F word, and I haven't seen a post from him in a long time. Which, if you guys haven't taken a look at it, you probably have seen him. If you're oh, wait, in August eighteenth, what the fuck? It's been a month. It's been a month to this day. Oh, jeez. Well, that was a funny time. Man. Send him a message. I did. I just said, okay. well, yo, where are you at? Yeah. Tell him, tell him we're, we're, we're talking about you on the newest deep dive on if the only he would listen. Yeah. Uh, no, he's the good. You know what the, the thing with casual is? He started something that we should have done. Mm-hmm. No, he's so, a very good format. Like he's everything. got a great format. I, I love how, his, I don't even know how he does that animation because mm-hmm. I've always wanted to do something like that where like the microphone comes up and the EF comes together or something like that. Well, he does it on Adobe, he says. Like, he does it on Adobe. Adobe, on Adobe yeah. yeah. And like I'm looking at getting our new, a new logo done too. Mm-hmm. Um, Jimmy, who's done the Infinity War and the Endgame podcast, the mm-hmm. breakdown, he's going to do t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but anyways, like casual, 
is like he's kind of like part of that family mm-hmm. that kind of started and he's really good so if you guys haven't checked taken a look at him i want to get him on and the reason i want to you i want to get him on for a couple of reasons a his reviews are good his format's mm-hmm. really good um he's an intelligent guy he's able to do a review in one minute and you get it also he just seems like a, he seems like he just fit in just naturally he's yeah like um i he sent me some audio stuff uh, he sent me some of his samples mm-hmm. just because I was like, hey, like this is what I do with my audio. And I just kind of like we don't do anything too crazy, at least with our videos and, and everything in terms of editing. But there is some post that is there. So he gave me a sample of his and I was able to isolate some of the negative noise in the background and, and mm-hmm. show him some stuff. And I'm hoping it's it's worked for him. But like he's just a, he's just a good dude. We had one interaction because i i didn't go off on him but it looked like i went off on him on the captain marvel review oh, okay. yeah i went off and then we like had a dm after mm-hmm. and uh he respectfully declined to go far as far as the conversation was leading towards mm-hmm. and then so i apologized after which like you know mad respect mm-hmm. for him on that part because like i'm one of those people that could generally talk about anything mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter like if you want to talk about any topic, mm-hmm. if I don't know, I want to hear you talk about it. I don't. I don't care if we go and get into an argument or whatever. Like, you know, my dad's a priest. Mm-hmm. We grew up in a church, and one of my best friends that I talk to on a regular basis is an atheist. Mm-hmm. And him and I go back and forth like long four or five day conversations, sometimes a week straight. Mm-hmm. And we're and he's pressing me on stuff, and I'm talking to him about stuff, and like. They're super uncomfortable sometimes because mm-hmm. obviously they're, he's poking and prodding in mm-hmm. spots that, let's say, I'm not familiar with or I don't understand or whatever because he's a much smarter, smarter person than mm-hmm. I am. But he's also one of those guys that he respects the boundaries as well. So, mm-hmm. And I also don't take things personally. Mm-hmm. So like, if he's commenting on something that might be hard for me to take, it's not like I'm going to, I don't retaliate with a screw you. At least in those contexts. Well, you're actually just having like a debate. Like not like a debate, like just like you just it's an exchange yeah, of exactly. ideas. Or right? if he has an opposing view, you're not gonna like, yeah. oh well fuck you. Well and and the hard part is, especially when it comes to like you know, religious people and mm-hmm. non religious people. And I also I don't like calling him an atheist because I don't like the term atheist. Mm-hmm. I don't like it just as much as I don't like sexist or anything mm-hmm. like that. Like I don't He's just a guy that doesn't believe in God. He's just a non believer. Re- he doesn't believe in religions. That's it. Uh, and I'm trying to n- not use the term atheist on anybody because mm-hmm. I actually think not the fact that it's, it has a negative connotation. Well, I think it definitely does. No, it, it does. And it shouldn't. But at the mm-hmm. same time, people that call themselves that carry themselves like any other douchebag that mm-hmm. wants to enforce their views yep. on you. Like uh, somebody that's turned vegan, for instance, and they are trying to force everybody to be vegan. And if you're not, then fuck you. Like, I would they say, automatically hate you. Like this doesn't imply, oh, this doesn't apply. To not everyone. all atheists. Sorry. Like, I'm just saying I've identify. never met an atheist that hasn't had that kind of like vegan attitude where they just like impose it. And it's like, yeah. I even tell them like, I don't care if you don't believe, yeah. but they just have to like, everyone or a lot of the people I've, oh yeah, every atheist I've met always feels the need to like just pressure their views on you. And it's kind of like, well, why? Well, and, and I'm, I'm they might've been around religious people that have felt to, to do mm-hmm. the same right but i mean i know with ours someone had uh it wasn't nick but somebody else who doesn't believe in any religion mm-hmm. doesn't care for religions in general uh he's like well what's the difference between yours and a cult i said simple you can walk through the door tomorrow mm-hmm. and we'll accept you and you can be part of the whole deal or whatever and you can leave tomorrow and we won't even give a shit that if you came or not mm-hmm. we'll care about you when you're there and when you leave if you want to be a part, if you want to still contact people like people to people, mm-hmm. then that's great. But in terms of the religious side of it, we're not going to hunt you down. We're not going to go looking for you. Mm-hmm. If you don't show up, bye mm-hmm. yeah, bye. You no, know, no one gives hope, a fuck. Hope you enjoy. You hope you took something out of it. Hope mm-hmm. you met a friend. Hope or whatever. Like, it's just that's the way that I've always explained our shit. Mm-hmm. I know that there's other stuff out there that's a little bit more controlling and everything mm-hmm. like that. But with Nick in Calgary, like my buddy mm-hmm. oh. there, it's never been the case. And so that's why this I, is not Nick on the podcast. Correct. No, 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 okay. not, not our Nick. No, no, this is my, this is Nick from Calgary, mm-hmm. but then casual had the same thing. Like he went to a point and he's like, listen, man, you're, we're going to a spot where I have no want or need to ever mm-hmm. to go to right now or whatever. I'm like, Oh, totally cool. Mm-hmm. And I felt really bad because I was going super hard because mm-hmm. I had a lot of feelings towards that, that movie mm-hmm. and more of the behind the scenes stuff behind it. Well, I remember that always but happened. Anyways, super sorry, but super respectful guy, mm-hmm. really awesome guy, and he's a guy that I would highly recommend. Like, 
checking out and I hope he's okay cuz it's strange that he hasn't posted a story cuz I look at his stories well, and I, I think like, he I posts. remember him like doing something like I don't know if it's just me like again like re- just remembering it being there but like I would say like decently recently like he was like him in a hotel or him playing with his cat I could have sworn I saw I don't know, man. I just like fucking remember. For all we know, he's gearing up to like, he's probably, he might have been recruited by some big company and he's going to be like, oh, I've just joined this thing and they're paying me 50 grand a month to do these videos. Like, mm-hmm. he could be just on, like, take, going away from Instagram because he has something better, which I really hope is the case. But I mean, it could be also a case where it gets too much mm-hmm. for anybody, right? Like, maybe he's, you know, for me, it was. Work was going shitty. I bought a rental property that was tanking. Real estate, oh, that was work, sorry. Um, I was trying to balance that. YouTube, we were getting some hits. Mm-hmm. Like we had a couple of videos that across 10K. Then they changed the algorithm. Mm-hmm. Then another person- Oh, I remember, was, sorry, you can keep going no, after no, this, but it. it was when we were gonna be able to get monetized. Yes. Right as we hit it, they changed the fucking rule and like yeah, doubled man. it or something. Like the Super amount of shitty. views and subscribers. Yeah, that, that pissed me off so much. Because we had hit it. Mm-hmm. Like that we had, we ended up having, I think we have like five or six videos well over 10K. Mm-hmm. But then what really crushed me is that there was this other guy that was doing mm-hmm. reviews and no knock against this guy. It was just this thing. I was like, he was... Just a personal He vendetta. was better at explaining his reviews, mm-hmm. but his reviews had really terrible quality. Mm. Like his audio and his video... Uh, whereas ours was really great quality. And what really hurt me was that, not really hurt, but people were leaving comments like, oh, you guys are like so good. How do you only have this many followers? Mm-hmm. So clearly we were hitting the right notes. Like our audio was really good. Mm-hmm. I was super proud of our audio and our video, just the look of it was really good, mm-hmm. which I got some tips from a photographer friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden he ended up doing one video, which he had said he got the information from Reddit and he redid it. And he ended up going gangbusters overnight. Like mm-hmm. it was on... Uh, I think it was Cloverfield, wasn't it? It was the Cloverfield paradox. And so he ended up doing this video where he was like mapping out and explaining mm-hmm. it. And then all of a sudden, just boom, it catapulted him. And I'm like, well, fuck. We, like, we've been going at this for, I think, almost a year at that point, mm-hmm. And we haven't even come close. And it was just like this thing where everything seemed to just collapse. Just like in May where everything was just mm-hmm. going haywire, haywire. At that point, I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. Mm-hmm. Like, I, it's... It's, I'm not a person that's ever had legit anxiety and I know people who have Mm. legit anxiety. I've had nervousness and I've had like the feeling that, you know, um, the sinking in your gut. It's just a sinking gut feeling Mm. for sure. But the feelings I was getting there and how it was affecting my outside world Mm -hmm. and how it happened so quickly. It's like, no, thanks. Like not a chance. That's the thing like with social media, like it never happened to me because again, like I just found it like really cool and just like really I was just really happy that I got the like opportunity just to like do this and have the skill set like that's what I was taking away like honestly I knew like the game plan was to like use this as a way to boost myself for marketing and university like just to, like sure. say I can do this and that's like what I always used it for so I've ever had like presentations like remember uh, in business class we were having a presentation and like, like and I did a company for I think it was entrepreneurship where I, I could do marketing and I was doing it to a marketing guy like I think Steve Clippenside, Clippenside or something like that. Like he's like part of Twenty Two Fresh, and he does like an actual agency in Regina. And like I actually impressed him because like I was doing this, and people were just like, "Whatever, yeah." And a lot of my classmates, it was an inside joke that I would always bring up entertain facts, right? Just because like during presentations, like if it was relevant, I would bring it up. And they're all just like waiting for me to do it, and I say like, and I know like you know why should you trust us? And then it was like I think at the time I had the Venom logo. Mm. I remember that, so I think I had like about. 60k at like max I'm like well this is why you should trust me and it was just like blew him away like he's actually super impressed I was like okay if i can impress like an actual marketing like a ceo of a fucking firm mm-hmm. like it's clearly a useful skill i have well and i mean the numbers speak for themselves mm-hmm. at that point that's a cool thing like mm-hmm. if you if you show up this a business meeting um and you're saying like hey this is what we have going for us like i know a lot of i was reading this one article on the algorithms when it comes to uh, websites. Mm-hmm. So those websites that they say, "Hey, this is ten celebrities that gotten terrible plastic sur- surgery or whatever," and then you click on it, and it's it doesn't show you all in one page. Mm-hmm. You have to flip through it, right? So then they'll go there and they'll say, "Well, hey, with this new style, we're actually getting one person to contribute ten different clicks on our every time they click mm-hmm. once. So one equals ten, no matter what. So then that means we're going to keep 
getting more and more because mm-hmm. the more they swipe to the next page because it has to load up the next page, then the more information we do. That's why in between a bunch of them, they have ads, mm-hmm. right? So for ad space. And so those are numbers that just speak for themselves. So as an investor, you're looking at it you're like, well, shit, that's mm-hmm. like your one post ended up getting 20 million people through it, which technically would have been 10 million, but it's still mm-hmm. 10 million. Yeah. I think that would be the numbers. So for you going up there, it's like, boom, 60 here. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been doing something that's clearly right, as opposed to going into one where it's like, this is my idea, and I think I can get this mm-hmm. many people based on this model, which could look good, but... But actually execution, like... Yeah. Like, whenever I tell anyone that, like, I do marketing for a realtor, like, and obviously, if, like, if you go, like, an 18-year-old's telling you, they're like, what the fuck, like, why? And you, like, tell them why. Because I remember this was... uh. I was talking to this one family. They were talking about how her daughter is like, they were just bragging about her daughter and about how like good she's at social media and how her like Facebook page for her company has 300 likes. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I know something about like having that. Like I think I had about like, and at this time I'll fully admit I was bragging because like they were flexing on me. It's so, like, fuck you. I'm going to flex back. I'm like, yeah, I had a uh, 79,000 or 78,000 followers, you know, but then I got deleted and they tried like poking. Oh, well, you know, well, you were doing something wrong. I guess if you were getting deleted. And I was kind of like, oh, no, I was totally in the right. Because I will explain this right now. Go for because it. Because I know my brother always makes fun of me saying I didn't know. I did know that, like, legally, I was 100% in the right. Mm-hmm. Like, 100%. I have, like, I don't have it with me. Like, I don't, I'm not going to read the whole statement I have. But, like, I actually background checked. Like, I checked the Canadian or the Criminal Code of Canada to see. I checked with my law teacher to see if I was doing what was legal. And he said, he was on the verge saying, like, you could get in trouble. But it's also, like, you're using it. You're not making any money off it. You're just, like promote it's like free advertisement like you're just talking about it like it's all yeah. in good use so for canada and this is also very similar to the states but i'm just like we live in canada so uh it's if you post if you have to if you're gonna use content so like a video like i did and it was a short amount of content you used it for the purpose of teaching criticism or review you're okay to use it as long as you like credit which i always did i always credited like i'd always do that and yeah i like, made no money off of it like, for How Much Your Mother, I will say this right now. Like, I turned my fucking page and I got people to watch that show. Like, people, right. like, the amount of times I posted it, like, people hated it. Like, I know my friend, like, he joked about hating it so much. But I got people to watch that fucking show. Like, it was free advertisement. And that's what pissed me off the most. It's just, like, if they actually had a reason to delete me, it'd be okay differently. Or it'd be a different story. But they didn't have a reason to delete me. And they wouldn't even respond to my, like, they haven't responded to my appeal from, like, beginning of august was that the appeal that they said they're going to look into it the mm-hmm. second time like they yeah the second so time you sent in a second appeal mm-hmm. and did they respond to the you saying we'll review and get back to you or just nothing they said we'll review and get back to you and they never did yeah which is like what the fuck you got to keep going at it i think i'm go- i think i need to look at a way because i think they said if you use a different email like because if you use the same email they said they should kind of get just trash it right so maybe i'll like look at a different one but honestly like the meme page it's just fun like it's just like a more like chillaxing like, i don't really care like i think i started off with 18.9 thousand like a month ago or like mm-hmm. around two months ago and now i'm at 18.5 but like i dropped like almost a thousand like actually over a thousand i was just gaining so it like kept it afloat mm-hmm. so like now it's going up and it's more fun and i have like kind of that same like community building up where i'll have people like commenting on my photos like shit like that will actually like want to talk to me and stuff like that. it's just more fun like environment it's just like more chillaxed have you been getting people from Entertain Facts that have found you and been like, hey, where have you been or anything? No. You should probably put a post out and been like, hey, this is the new Entertain Facts well, page. Well, it's in my bio. It's also a private, like, I guess we could talk, people don't understand. So for meme pages, like, lots of meme pages are private mm-hmm. and it's super annoying because if you DM someone a meme, like, it's private and you have to follow to see it. Mm-hmm. And I noticed, like, once I was public, like, it was still, like, I was gaining, but it wouldn't be, like, consistent where I'd be, like, losing, like, I'd be gaining, like, three a day. But once I turned private, it was just gaining because if someone sent them my meme, instead of just like they'd be forced to follow, and like the, the majority of people would just follow it, and, and so it was just like it just kept going up, and like just for the meme page, like that's the best, like that's just a new way of learning for me because like back when I was doing Minecraft facts, like being private would like really make no sense because it's kind of like right. how are people gonna find you? Yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. But like with this, like how it is now, being a meme page, if you're not private, it's probably like worse off weird Mm -hmm. are you finding that the memes themselves are generating more than the actual facts uh no because like memes again like with facts like it was just like 
more rewarding and just more fun to actually like go out and like look for facts and like find like crazy facts like no one would know about. Well, and it's, it gains your own knowledge. Mm-hmm. Just you have this backpack now of knowledge of these random facts that you found. And it was just like also like with facts that people would like if I had a I remember I had a couple like I know the one that I would repost like every couple of months just because it did well each time was the goodbye song to Michael in the office like the mm. whatever like minute song. You that posted any- that twice. Hmm? Did you post that? You posted that twice. Didn't I you? think at least three times. Oh, mm-hmm. but it would, oh, each time it would get crazy amount of views because people would kept like sending it because like right. I knew like as a fact page like you have to know because like people don't give a fuck about a lot of these things. Right. So the big like the big ones for me were like obviously Marvel, but that was just more consistent. Yeah. But like Office facts, yep. like where the like people love the Office. Well, I mean, not only that, if you would have gone back and did facts on like. Uh, Office, Friends, mm-hmm. How I Met Your Mother, Lost, mm-hmm. uh, Sopranos, The Wire, Breaking Bad, all of those things. Mm-hmm. Those are things that people like hold near and dear mm-hmm. to them. Like, well, How I Met Your are... Mother was fun. Oh, so you can finish your thought, though. No, no, for sure. But I was going to say, like, what you did with How I Met Your Mother, let's say, instead of converting to a meme page, mm-hmm. even though like you wanted to, let's say, if you were going to be like, I can't think of facts anymore, mm-hmm. if you would have just gone to like even uh, like any of those movies there, mm-hmm. Like those are facts. Those are movies that people have seen, and they would love to see them. Like if you do a fact on like a James Bond, mm-hmm. like let's say you do a James Bond month, and you post facts about every James Bond or something. Like because the beauty that you that I noticed through How I Met Your Mother is that all you have to do is focus on that, and then mm-hmm. The Office, and those are so beloved by people that mm-hmm. they're gonna want to know everything about mm-hmm. it, and they just want to see it. Like I know for me, if I see anything with a Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Mm-hmm. I get so jazzed if I see the Triforce, if I see red, blue, and green gems. I think of like the the sapphire, mm-hmm. the rubies, and all that. Like, it automatically makes me feel like I'm a young person, and that there's something about that game that just seeing a screenshot of it just makes me want to go and play it, so or you, watch it, or whatever. So, like, I would say like near the time how much of mother I started posting about was like when I kind of like just started transitioning. Like, again, like I didn't want to do like like straight up just memes and just shit like that, but like. I just I want to say there were memes more like I just say there were more like video clips I'd post like for the most part. Yeah, you had like well I think the one it was like that South Park clip. Yeah, the South that Park was one was the worst one. one. Yeah, I know that was the one you got a lot of flack mm-hmm. for, which was like fair enough. I was just well, like, and that was the one. And see, I got frustrated and Nick got frustrated because mm-hmm. like you didn't see anything wrong with it. And well, I just thought it, honestly I will say but like honestly like, it was a clip from a show. I wasn't like endorsing. It. I'm just saying 100. it was a funny clip. But like yeah. I understood. I wasn't like saying oh like, you guys are in the wrong. I'm just saying it shouldn't be taken in like such a like. It's like comedy, like Dave Chappelle is kind of like that thing where it's kind of like, it's bad, but it's also like funny. No, it is for sure. But yeah, it's very dicey to post on like a public page. Well, and the the big thing is, is that if they know, if they know what nationality you are Mm -hmm. or what race you are, for instance, then posting something, especially now, that's Mm -hmm. what was dicey about it. Like that's what Nick and I were like telling you, we're like, dude, like. We get it. I think I thought it was hilarious. I've mm-hmm. seen that episode. I know which one you're talking about. And it's funny, right? But to post it on your page, <coughs> excuse me, it's a very, very dicey proposition. I personally think that's what did it in. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was a copyright thing. No. I think they used I, del- the I deleted that one like yeah. very quickly too. It wasn't like a thing where it was up. Yeah. Like I think like it didn't even survive a full like twelve hours. And you okay? So you deleted mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So it was hours. like like there wasn't anyone like report. Like I remember there was another one I posted and someone said like. Do w after that like do WTF? I deleted immediately. Yeah, like it was one of those things. I wasn't gonna be like a bitch about it, but well, it's hard too because like you're like, well, this is mine. I should be able to post whatever. Mm-hmm. But how? Ha- but the problem is, you have to suffer the consequences, mm-hmm. and that and that's a really tough thing too. Like even with um, YouTube, like a couple of videos I put up, there was there was de- there was cuts of those where I'll, I've taken things out because mm-hmm. I guess it could be a knock at my integrity at the time, but mm-hmm. I'm like. I just need to get this review out. I'm not here to cause shit. Mm-hmm. On this podcast, I don't give a flying fuck, mm-hmm. right? Like my my concern is making sure that my arguments are at least valid in the way that I'm presenting them. Well, I like the more like not like political, but like just like more like actual like life where you can actually like discuss something. Like I like that's yeah. what like once we stopped in the live shows and just started like focusing on like just talking about shit, it was just like more fun. Yeah, because we we were, it was about us. Mm-hmm. Like we, we ended up talking about us and how these things are kind of interwoven into our lives, right? Um, and then again, so when we're talking entertain facts, that was like you might downplay it, but that's a big thing mm-hmm. for sure, right? And it is a loss. Like it's like losing. It's like I don't know. It's 
it's like not losing a kid, obviously, but like you've built something from Mm -hmm. scratch. You've gained your following. You have your groups of people. You had your little effers all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's all gone. That was the biggest thing. The biggest thing I was mad about was the fact that I couldn't like just say like thank because honestly like I couldn't say like thank you or goodbye or like if they yeah. had told me like you have tonight and that's it like you're deleted like at this date you do a 24 exact, hour live show mm-hmm. I would say thank you so much for like all the support because honestly like it was a like, crazy amount of support like for like doing yeah. just stupid shit well and especially when it came to the live show itself mm-hmm. like by the end of it we were actually getting in the beginning we were I think we got pretty good and then but our video quality sucked on the live show well, Instagram video quality just fucking yeah. sucks but then there was times where we'd get like 300 and some people like mm-hmm. just passing through waving saying hi or whatever and then from those 300 we get a bunch of people that would just stick around and be mm-hmm. part of the conversation right mm-hmm. again guys like Arturo KF uh, mm-hmm. uh, Bell um, there's a few other people Blake here and Jesse, and there. Blake and Jesse I assume they don't listen to this but in the odd, odd case they do are they not listening to the podcast that would be very I think very Jesse bad. like occasionally listens to it like I guess if you don't if I guess if you don't listen to podcasts mm-hmm. or haven't gotten into the thing which is really weird because like everybody listens to it mm-hmm. but I'm like I, I applied for this job a while back and now I'm almost regretting it because I exclusively listen to podcasts mm-hmm. except today and I'll tell you why my iPod classic mm-hmm. still works mm-hmm. 160 gigs I've got 3,500 songs on it I found it and I thought it was busted because it wasn't turning yeah. on the thing works and she's just a thing dead. of beauty. I think it missed me too because the first 45 minutes I was playing it at work, because mm-hmm. at work now, I put on my headphones and I just work. Mm-hmm. It was playing all of these great songs that I've had for years. Mm. I love that thing. You know what I'm excited for the most though, just in the future? Movie theater stories. Movie theater stories. Just working mean? there. Oh, Just yeah, all man. the shit that Dude, will go on. My friend Sean Hoff. Mm-hmm. I think he's, I don't know if we were friends anymore. I haven't talked to him for a while. I saw him a couple of years ago. He just recently got married. Um, good dude. One of the funniest fucking guys I've ever met in my life. He worked at the Galaxy when it first mm-hmm. opened. And he was a stud there. Like, uh, he organized video game nights there. Like, it was awesome. Like, playing rock band and Guitar Hero on the big mm-hmm. screen. Like, amazing, right? We would go there late night, 12 o'clock, one, like 1 o'clock when mm-hmm. it's closing down. And... He would open up all the the arcade games and like you just press that little button and you'd get credits for we'd probably had two hours of credits mm-hmm. and we would sit there and play like House of the Dead too for hours Fuck. and he would just hook us up and they were so good it was so fun there oh my god I wonder if like what the arcade at Landmark will be like I never really thought about that you think you can get us in the grand opening and we can do like an F entertain facts or not sorry an F word like thing. We'll see how good we'll see the relationship with the boss. The boss actually, I'm pretty sure, like liked me. Like the general manager is guy who actually interviewed me, and he seemed like he actually really liked me. Does he know anything about what we're doing? I think. Oh. I don't. I don't know. I never like really like. Actually, yes, I did because I remember I brought up like the like realtor. Like if anyone asks me about like how I can market, like it kind of mm. like goes hand in hand. So I like say, well, what you know about movies? Like I do like weekly podcasts, like uh, just stuff like that. I think he knows, but this is an idea I had. Mm-hmm. And I, and I think it's better that I say it right now. It might work. We set up a booth mm-hmm. at opening nights of places. Mm-hmm. Or let's say like the Friday night. We've already seen the movie, let's say on a Thursday. Mm-hmm. And we get people to sit down and give us the review of the movie they just saw. Mm-hmm. And we just do a collection of them. And we release like a 25-minute clip of mm-hmm. us talking to people that are reviewing the movies. Oh, it could be like one of those like Charlie Kirk things where he goes to like college campuses. And no, just, that's, that's uh, Stephen Crowder. Where he does the change my minds, or does Charlie Kirk do Charlie that too? Charlie Kirk does too. Yeah, I see. Crowder does the change my mind, which is like a meme, which is super mm-hmm. funny. But like instead of that, be like, "How was your movie?" And then people would come in, sit down, we would record them giving us a review of their movie, and then they would leave. So then the reviews are not about us giving reviews. Mm-hmm. The reviews are actually from people that are going to see the movie. Like we have sponsorship. Okay, well, I think that might work. It. We'll see if I'm doing if I'm doing really good. I might have to bring it up. Like, hey, yo, man, want to move business a bit more? Hey, that'd be great. Give me magic being sponsored by a movie theater that would work the, oh my god free tickets the Even problem is theaters will have free tickets anyway okay so before we get to there or no as we're leading to there so uh entertain facts is now unfortunately dead mm-hmm. the podcast is still going because so mm-hmm. far no one there's i don't think there's anything that could shut us down really because we haven't no podcast actually it's really hard to get your podcast taken down for copyright even yeah. though we have nothing like relatively like, yeah. to get copyrighted for so then this is going to bleed into like i guess the history of f mm-hmm. Because then, obviously, like I mentioned before, F-E-F comes from Entertain Facts. And 
we finally were able. So the big mistake, the biggest mistake I think we ever made was the fact that we didn't do the casual moviegoers model mm-hmm. first. Because now we can't. Yeah, no. Because we, well, we'll see how long he's uh, gone for. I don't know. Two months might be time to pick up that shit. Well, the thing with me is that we we made such a big mistake early on. First of all, we didn't know about Anchor, and I don't know if Anchor was even around. Second of all, for some reason, I thought, because I wasn't listening to regular podcasts. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is totally random. We talked about jobs. I applied for this new job, and I'm worried about getting it because I won't have enough time to listen to the podcast I listen to every day. That's mm-hmm. what the whole thing of that. I just realized that I completely left that. But anyways, where was I now? You're talking about Fuck. casual movie go or big mistake we made. Biggest mistake. So we got into YouTube way too early. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't have even touched YouTube. Mm-hmm. What we should have done is what Casual did mm-hmm. because we spent the whole time trying to transfer over the Instagram followers because at the time I think it was 40 or 50 when we started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We tried to get the 40 or 50 followers, 50,000 followers to go onto YouTube and watch our YouTube videos mm-hmm. like a bunch of idiots. And instead of being like, wait a minute, they're right there. We could have just made clips there of our reviews of stuff, Mm -hmm. done. If IGTV was around, I think it would have been like super ideal, like back to start because like obviously like taking reviews and just because like that whole podcast perspective would be out because you're actually like, you can't actually discuss, like it's just like bullet point, like shit, like just. Well, well, but mm -hmm. the thing was though, is that a lot of the reviews we end up whittling down from like, Mm -hmm. I think the original, the first ones are like 10 minutes. Well, aside from the couple of videos. Homecoming was like our longest one. But the Homecoming was just a podcast. Mm -hmm. That's why. So the, that one is still up on YouTube. Those were fun, though. Like, when we just watch a movie and just immediately go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what we used to do, right? And, and it was fun, like, mm-hmm. and especially when I was living here. Mm-hmm. Now that I live at Soap, yeah. it's a little bit more of a pain in the ass. But we made the mistake of not doing that and not just sticking to Instagram mm-hmm. and using video on Instagram because we could do stuff in a minute. Mm-hmm. That's the thing, right? Because, again, we were whittling it down to get more and make it easier because – we were working off with shitty laptops, mm-hmm. so that didn't help either. And then the other mistake was, not a mistake, but we didn't know what Anchor was, and we were working off Libsyn, and we had no idea about any of that stuff. We had the equipment. I just was still learning how to use it. Mm-hmm. We got onto YouTube too early, and the show that we have now is the show that we should have started with, mm-hmm. like that fucking type of show that I think we just took it way too fucking seriously at the start well, it was just and, like really yeah. like stiff and I don't understand why I think like I don't understand why we formatted it that way because then that format ended up turning into I remember, remember those first videos where this wall was just blue and mm-hmm. I wasn't able to get the camera angle proper so it was like this big blue background and then the camera that we have was only doing 12 minutes at a time and, yeah, I know, and that's, that's super shitty and it's still super shitty and I think a lot of them still do like they do that well just a processing card I think well no because I changed I bought four different mm-hmm. memory cards it's the actual cameras themselves so there's another type of camera that could just keep going and mm-hmm. going we could have very well done it on our phones though mm-hmm. with the way what we were doing well I couldn't because my phone is an iPhone and it had 32 fucking gigabytes of storage oh. and that was the biggest issue I came across entertain facts I always had less than a gigabyte available of storage at all times. Well, the, the thing is, though, is that we don't need that many gigs of storage. We can just delete the, Like mm-hmm. We just need to transfer it. Because I know you mentioned it now because I said, I'm like, well, let's just do video with our phones because we can actually get it closer and, mm-hmm. and it'll be a lot better. Even for storage-wise, we just transfer it over and delete it from the phone and then just have it on the computer. We could still play around with that. But it was so, like, the problem was we never rebranded in terms of starting over until we got onto Anchor. Mm-hmm. And even when we got onto Anchor, we were still doing the format as before. Like, even the titles of our first ones were like, Spider-Man, James Gunn, this and more, mm-hmm. and this and more. And I think I don't even think we started on, like, episode one. Mm-hmm. I think it was, like, episode 12. Mm-hmm. And also, our whole episodic thing is way out of whack. So, I'm going to wait till we get to 100, and then we'll get into season two. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which, I don't even think season two will be a thing. Or I'll just keep it going, and it'll just... I Go think up. season, like if we structure it, honestly, we should just like look and see if anyone wants to be our camera guy. You know what? I would love to have a camera person mm-hmm. and then someone to take down notes of when things are going on. Because mm-hmm. I was like, like thinking about that too, like in my head, like last week. Like, actually, like an like, intern. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like just like keeping notes on my phone, like topics and like timeline wise, just yeah. so I can like get a, like rough estimate of like where it would be. Well, and I keep forgetting, like I write them down, like the list that I mm-hmm. send you guys or when I remember to send you guys. And that's what I'm trying to like get the con- like the thing to go, right? Mm-hmm. And the title now, instead of it being the topics, I've been finding, I think we've been getting cons- more consistent views, not huge spikes in views, but more consistent mm-hmm. views with the actual names of the titles because mm-hmm. they're I think we're getting better at them. Like between you, me, and my brother, mm-hmm. like we're coming up with interesting titles. Well, just more punny. Like more, more yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and they're ones that I'm hoping are drawing people in. But at the same time, like even with this fucking thing, like some episodes are doing good, some episodes mm-hmm. don't. Like last week, we ended up having like 25 or 30 mm-hmm. listens. That was a good episode, though. It was a really good mm-hmm. episode. Not last week, sorry, the week before, okay. the Bad Boys episode. Mm-hmm. But then I look at other people on Instagram. They only have they're only on episode twenty six, and they're getting four hundred and five hundred views on their mm-hmm. shit. And I'm like, we're we've hit some type of a of a weird ceiling, and it mm-hmm. always seems like we're always just we're on the right track on something, but we just haven't found that trick to break out. So then when you're talking to Instagram and anybody listening that wants to start an Instagram thing, and you're saying it's hashtags, mm-hmm. aside from the issues that we had. For a young in, up and coming Instagrammer, or even for our stuff, mm-hmm. then what do you think is going to work now with the new ways of Instagramming? So for my thing, like just I guess like how I overcame my entertain facts, like the biggest thing was a consistency and uploading consistent consistency and quality was the biggest thing because like all my posts like they just looked visually appealing, they just looked good. They drew you in. And they also like my page was like very consistent. Where like I I would post memes at nights, like actual just like memes I'd steal. But I always delete them in the morning just so like visually it just looked like one thing. Mm-hmm. I think also a big thing that lots of people do is they try and be someone else. Are they trying like just copy someone else or like do stuff that way? And the thing I always said, because I remember someone changed their name to Entertainment Hub or Entertain Hub. I've seen that page yeah. before. Entertain Hub. And they like had a logo similar to mine. I told them like, you know what? Like you can use it if you want. But like just think about this. Like no one would want to follow you if you're going to just be a secondhand me. Because I'm still here, it's free to follow me. I'm like no, I said, like I sound like a dick, but I was like I made sure like he didn't take it offensively. Like he like actually liked that stuff I was giving him. Mm-hmm. So if you're gonna like, the biggest thing is if you're gonna try and be like someone else, just know that if that someone else is still active, why would they use you? You know what he needed to do? He needed to have Entertain Hub, mm-hmm. and it should have been an entertaining page about Pornhub. <laughs> Mm-hmm. that's a missed opportunity that's the route that they should have gone and just find like just search the internet the for comments. any type of like yeah mm-hmm. actually you know honestly Nicolette Shea's boobs are this much in diameter and <laughs> but it's just one of those things like the biggest issue is just people keep like just trying to copy other people or they try like make shortcuts like going on someone's page and like asking for followers I would always go off on these people like no remorse yeah. And my the biggest thing I loved is that my followers, even stuff I wouldn't even have to initiate it. My followers would sometimes roast the fuck to the point where I have to like say, "Okay, guys, like it's done, like you it's had an done." Army. Like, it was. Yeah. A, I remember there's a twenty thread comment, mm-hmm. flaming the fuck. And this person usually they'll they'll delete their comments. Like after I would like roast people, they delete their comment just you know like so you know they kind of get attacked. This person refused to delete it and just got destroyed. And I just like you know what. I DM'd him saying, like, listen, like, you know, it's all for fun. Because, like, even if I did roast someone, like, I'd always, like, make sure, like, they didn't take it personally. Or, like, just saying, like, you know, I'm just, like, fuck you. You don't leave them battered and mm-hmm. bloodied on the on the yeah, floor. No. You, you kind of make sure that they're good and they can go to the mm-hmm. hospital on their own and everything. It's like dealing with, like, uh, little Stelio. Like, I'll roast the fuck out of him. But I'll say, you know what, man? I'm just joking. I'm just fucking with you. And, like, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, that's just, that's what I missed him. Honestly, the thing I missed the most is just the community. Like that was it. Well, it was that's what you built, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's what I miss about the live show. Mm-hmm. Even though I always liked it when we didn't do the live show for the very reason. That's why these deep dives came out because mm-hmm. I didn't have to worry about cameras. I didn't have to worry about anything. Just sitting down and talking to one person or two people mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, and we were we pigeonholed ourselves too. Mm-hmm. Like we because I was copying other pod or other not podcasts but YouTube channels. So. I was using what I've seen from Collider and some of the stuff from Screen Junkies and like their format and applying it to our stuff, which when I I, I can remember how we sounded or mm-hmm. how I sounded. And I was like, no swearing, mm-hmm. no, no, uh, no names. Yeah, no I don't know person, what happened. I remember we were stuff. very adamant about not swearing. And like it wasn't even like a smooth transition. It was just one time we just started going and it yeah. just never went back. And it, was- it, it was, but like, that's not how we talk. Mm-hmm. 
the and the the interesting thing is my YouTube videos were more me mm-hmm. than the podcast was. And I remembered it was it was I think it was like the holidays or something, and my buddies or my brother's friends, Spencer yeah, Spencer and Jordian were in town. And they're like, hey, man, like I've seen some of your videos or whatever. Like it sounds like really good. It's cool because it actually sounds like you. Mm-hmm. Like it sounds like it is G who's telling me. It's not G pretending to be somebody else. Because I remember at that point I transitioned. And like I was modeling our reviews mm-hmm. off of Jeremy John's because mm-hmm. I did like the cuts. I like the cold opens. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I liked doing the cuts because A, most of the videos ended up being like 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to release an 18 minute video because a lot of it was like pauses and me Mm -hmm. screwing up and having to start over again. And B, I I like watching that. Mm -hmm. So I think what happened is we started to slowly transition to doing a show we we would watch or Mm -hmm. listen to. Yeah. But (coughs) didn't mean you and I didn't get into our tiffs. Mm Mm-hmm. I think the big one ended up the ended off the best way because we were arguing a lot because you were. Well, this is, I think it was a big power struggle. I think that's like the biggest thing, and I just kind of like realized, like, you know, what? I don't really like care at this point. Like, well, we were both caring for for two different reasons. So, and the thing is, we were separating the priorities. Mm-hmm. You were focused on your followers, but mm-hmm. we weren't gaining them for a while, mm-hmm. and we were talking like. If you go back and look at some of those YouTube videos, we started doing out polls, mm-hmm. like the polls of like top mm-hmm. five movies oh, yeah. and top ten this. Um, the news show was split up into two. Mm-hmm. We were doing all sorts of stuff to try to appeal it. We did that Fight Club thing. Mm-hmm. We did the um, we did that. Uh, was the Fight Club the one where it was Batman versus Kevin McAllister? Oh, yeah. and Superman and versus Goku. That's the one. And then we did the um, sorry, my headphones. And then we did the quiz show, mm-hmm. and like I made those pedestals and stuff, mm-hmm. which was fun to do, right? And I got the stickers made and yeah. everything like that. But like we were so divided on what the fuck we wanted mm-hmm. to do, and it ended up being worse and worse. So then eventually, I just took over the YouTube stuff mm-hmm. and was super protective. Like I was super protective mm-hmm. of that and the podcast. And then I was begrudgingly doing the stuff for the Instagram followers aside from the live show. Cause I actually enjoyed the live mm-hmm. show, but like we were so divided until I remember, I, I remember how it was resolved. I said, we are in a situation where it's Kevin Feige and Pearl Mutter, mm-hmm. where you have the movie production side of things. And I've got the TV stuff mm-hmm. and, or where I'm, we're operating separately like that as opposed to try to move it together. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually helped because, well, A, it helped because it helped diffuse that Mm -hmm. type of argument that we had because that's kind of what it's been, right? Like Mm -hmm. it's like, this is how I want things to go. No, this is how I think they should go. And I guess that happens when people are like really creative. Mm -hmm. And then I was taking ownership of it because of two reasons. One, I was doing all the work, Mm -hmm. but I was doing all the work because I didn't bother to let anybody in on the work Mm -hmm. if that makes it yeah that's that's what i ended up figuring out Mm -hmm. where it's like i wanted it to be a certain way so i completely took control of everything Mm -hmm. uh you and i had gone 50 50 on the cash Mm -hmm. to buy the cameras and Mm -hmm. the the microphones and all that and uh yeah a little update we haven't gotten any money from this so Mm -hmm. um and then we were I don't know. I honestly don't remember what exactly the transition point was, but I think that realization of we are now in two different spots. You're the head of Disney because the F word is like is the underneath entertain mm-hmm. facts, right? So if you were to look at a network, it's like entertain facts is at the very top mm-hmm. of this pyramid, and then you draw two little lines, let's say, and then you'd have the F word, and then the YouTube channel, like mm-hmm. the podcast and YouTube. Yeah. But the parent company was the F word. Mm-hmm. So I was fighting against the parent company, which I've been in situations like that before. And that was our biggest thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have anything up until that point. Not really, <sighs> but like just overall, just like content wise, like I think there's a point, like just like it was like, I wouldn't say like fairly, like it was a couple of months ago, like just around six months ago, where it's just like the podcast is like, wasn't like just fun to even like do. But mm-hmm. then we just like branched off and just start talking about like actual like, just like it was more just casual where we just like didn't give a fuck like you didn't have to like just what you have to watch trailer like that was all you to really do like prior mm-hmm. to we'd like do research and like it was just more like 
professional, but like once we started talking about just like life stories and just like bringing things in, we actually like just like stop giving a fuck that we like where we live and just like talking about where we live and shit like that. It became more fun. Like it was more like Joe Rogan based, where I can see like I would be watching the shit we were talking about. Like if it was cut up into things, like I would actually watch it. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Well, even that clip that you put together, like mm-hmm. it was it was a good clip, and like even some of those shorter clips that I was doing before, mm-hmm. um, where I was releasing them. Like we were commenting on trailers, so I'd find that mm-hmm. section yeah. and put it up and stuff, which I'm I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna start doing the video though with the camera mm-hmm. because I can at least take one fucking piece together and that's it. I might go buy a stand or like a, a stand for your camera mm-hmm. phone to prop it up or whatever. But uh, we'll see how that's gonna work. And that's the biggest thing is that well, I just got the shivers for some reason. Mm-hmm. We st- we finally are doing the show that we were supposed to do. Like this is the show that's actually no pun intended, entertaining. Mm -hmm. Like this is the stuff that we, this is where I said for a while now where it doesn't matter if it doesn't go anywhere, even though, yeah, it's frustrating when you see other people that are new to it Mm -hmm. and they're all, they're already at 500 or 400 like people listens Mm -hmm. per episode. Yeah. And we've been doing this for a long time. But the thing was, is I'm I'm trying to think of the fact that we've changed so much, even when, since we started on anchor Mm -hmm. that, Anybody that started listening to us in our first few episodes where when you look at the numbers, there was actually quite a bit of people. Mm -hmm. Those people either left because they didn't like the change or people came in and then left because they didn't like what was going on there. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like we should have just restarted. But at the same time, I'm like, whatever. At this point, because we've not scrapped YouTube, but we're just doing the audio and we've Mm -hmm. streamlined everything, I could give a flying fuck. I'm just doing this because, like, it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's I fun think, now. So for the phone, I have a stand you can use. Like, it's one of those gorilla pods. You just kind of, like, zoom in. Or zoom, zoom, okay. just tap in. It, like, it, we'd have to do the same thing we do with, the uh, like, iPad, though, and, like, actually, like, prop it up on something. Like, just, like, oh, okay. at the height-wise. But, like, yeah, yeah. Which next was fun. Week, we can, can do, do that if you want. Yeah. But I think once I get adjusted to university, and, like, the, I think the videos are honestly, like, just a way to go. Like, for monetization, at least, and it's, like, at least, like... Getting a more mainstream audience because like mm-hmm. podcasts, like I think we have a good podcast, but like not lots of people just like listen to podcasts. Well, regularly. and I, I, I just think there's not just that. I think also people haven't found us yet. Well, that's what I was going to say like not like they don't listen to us. Yeah. They just don't like they don't listen to podcasts. They just like you have a like select like podcast to choose from. Like if you're going to like what podcast should I watch? Joe Rogan, like popular like fucking podcasts. The, someone had put up on Instagram, the pod father. Mm hmm. You know? Exactly, yeah. Like, there's just stuff like that. So it's hard for podcast. It's very hard to even get noticed. Which I think, like Joe Rogan, I, I'm gonna like say I don't know the stats wise, but I'm like guaranteeing the videos draw a lot of people to his podcast for sure. And I'm not gonna say like the opposed to the podcast clips, drawing people people to the like videos. Well, even if you look at his clips, like he'll, he'll so he'll release the whole episode, yeah. right? Whether it's two or three hours, just like we do. But now we're doing it audio before mm-hmm. we were doing it in video. Um, then his clips are what are huge mm-hmm. that's why everybody's doing clips yeah but you know why because they work mm-hmm. like doing clips actually works and then it'll draw you to mm-hmm. there and then we just input the rest of it and i think the way you edited them are a way for us to like stand out so mm-hmm. it is kind of how youtube is going mm-hmm. like our people are doing it however they're clips that are working for the podcast mm-hmm. and it's like i th- I, th- I don't know the way that you did that last video i think perfectly summarized how we are Mm -hmm. and what kind of feel you're getting now. And I think that's why we had so many listens on that last one. I think for the style of it, I think there would be two styles I like focus on. Like one will be like that one where it's like edit like heavy. And if it's like, for example, from last week, like the monopoly discussion, I think I just like straight up just release it. Like like no edits, just like that. Yeah. Which 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 is like totally fine. Saturday. Well, it's always me like, kind of outdated but i think it's still like a good discussion either way like i'll just like kind of like edit and just like honestly just straight up like post it well i think the thing is is now we don't have to worry too much about when like when you get them done mm-hmm. as long as they come out right mm-hmm. like i don't think it matters because we'll just reference it hey this was from our latest episode if you haven't heard it we got a new episode coming out but whatever go back and listen to that other one right based on this clip um because even rogan's clips come out after the whole thing comes mm-hmm. out if i remember correctly yeah no uh so you know I just think now, and for anybody listening, because this is kind of like a, like this is a cool little deep dive on just just that inner workings of stuff behind the scenes, and like 
the fact that we've had our meetings and I remember that last meeting we had, I think it was around the holidays that we wrote mm-hmm. a bunch of shit down. Mm-hmm. We did none of it, mm-hmm. but I'm glad that we did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Especially the one where we were like, Oh, let's go try to get ourselves onto like a, a, a local radio mm-hmm. station or whatever. I hate, especially now the older that I'm getting, I hate being told what to do. Mm-hmm. I, I dislike it unless it's work and I understand it. But mm-hmm. like if someone were to come in and be like, listen, I'll pay you guys each two grand a month Mm -hmm. to do your podcast so we have two scenarios one person saying he's going to pay us two grand three grand a month which is Mm -hmm. you know a lot a lot of money right Mm -hmm. each to do your podcast however no swearing it has to be this it has to be that or that or a guy that's going to be like well i'll pay you guys like 500 a month Mm -hmm. each and you do whatever you just keep doing what you're doing Mm -hmm. i will take the 500 every day because this is now a space where it's like it's it's not a safe space. It's my, it's our space. It's our hangout, and and the and the thing surrounding it is the fact that if you listen to us, I'm hoping. And this is what I was super excited about when the guy messaged me back, and he's like, "Dude, he's like, what you guys have is really good. Mm-hmm. Like, a that's super nice mm-hmm. to hear. Is that." What you're putting out, regardless of if a lot of people are listening to, when somebody does listen to it that's been in around the podcast game for a while, says something like that, it's like, oh, we're doing something right, but we're also doing something wrong because not a lot of people are listening to it. Mm -hmm. But they perfectly described what both versions were. Mm -hmm. So they're like, the deep dive is that Joe Rogan style where you're you're interviewing one or two people or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the regular weekly podcast, he's like, it sounds like you're hanging out with your friends just talking about stuff that you would talk about. I'm like... That's exactly what we were going mm-hmm. with. Like, come into our audio basement mm-hmm. and just hang out. And I, and the ones that I like listening to kind of have that feel. Well, I think just the biggest thing, like especially like, and obviously the opportunity hasn't arose or arised for like to get paid arisen arisen to get like paid five hundred. But like, yeah. even though like, because think about it, like going from making zero to five hundred and you can still do whatever the fuck you want mm-hmm. is one thing. It's like great. But if you're gonna get paid two thousand, it's like a temporary pay, because eventually the show is just gonna suck ass and it'll be stale as fuck. Because like even in that sentence, I think I swore quite a lot. Oh, well, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and it's not even the swearing part of it. Like this is where I find a lot of people are having issues with, um, with with people being like, oh well, why do you have to swear? It's not about having to swear. It's the fact that. When you implement one restriction, Mm -hmm. it never just starts at one restriction. There's this whole thing going on in Canada right now where it's there's the the um, the bill on pronouns and stuff, Mm -hmm. and there's people that are fighting against it. C sixteen. Okay, what is C sixteen? It's passed, but I don't think they've implemented it yet. Mm -hmm. So it's compelled speech. It's a compelled speech act to make sure that you use the right pronouns. That's what it is now. That sounds fine on the surface, but one of the guys fighting against it, who's Jordan Peterson, who I'm a huge fan of, because I know what he's talking about, Mm -hmm. because I read his stuff and I know, like all those intellectuals that people are branding dangerous individuals, he is not, he doesn't care, he's actually said this, if someone comes up to me and says, I'm transgender, I would like to be called this way, Mm -hmm. he will call you that way. Obviously, he's a psych- he's an, he's one of the like the smartest guys out there, mm-hmm. and so he'll know if you're also legitimate or not, or mm-hmm. if you're trying to goad him into doing to, yeah. to, to saying something, and then you go after him. His argument is the fact that the government shouldn't start compelling our speech on anything because it's not going to start with the gender pronouns, mm-hmm. or sorry, it's not going to end with it. It's going to start with these pronouns that a small collective is making a large amount of noise for. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to start turning into other things. Mm-hmm. And so once you start compelling people's speech, that means that you're compelling people's thoughts because mm-hmm. thoughts, sorry, speech comes from what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. So then, this is another thing that's been going on. They're actually doing gender bias training or uh, re- uh, bias training in with lawyers in Ontario. I think they're still doing it. Where... They'll actually do a test, which this test has failed the second time across the board. It's mm-hmm. not even something that works, mm-hmm. but they're implementing it to see if there's any bias, racial biases or anything like that. Hmm. Where I'm going with this is once there's over, there's people overreaching like government like this mm-hmm. that are compelling you to do one thing, 
they will have the power to keep going and going and going. And that's what a lot of these people that are calling for this bill to go through that are thinking they're doing it just for this. Mm -hmm. One day it's going to go into a territory that they didn't want it to be. Mm -hmm. And then we can easily look at them and be like, well, because you did this, it equaled that. Mm -hmm. And the more I've been listening to a lot of these people talk of all, like I've listened to people who are contractors of Peterson that are cohorts of Peterson, like all sorts Mm -hmm. of stuff. Like right now, the stuff that I'm listening to, I have no idea what to think. All I know is how to think. Mm -hmm. And so if someone was to come here and offer us that amount of money, it's not going to start with just the swear words. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to come with a script. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to come with a a bunch of demands because they've brought on a new investor that wants us to say Mm -hmm. all sorts of things. I'm not concerned with this SAS podcast network yet, but... I have mentioned this on uh, another podcast I did with somebody else Mm -hmm. called The Story of You, like they were interviewing me. It's not out yet, is it? No. Yeah. I said my only concern oh and I also think talked about it with my last deep dive on mm-hmm. Hollywood trends my only concern is when they decide to say that a we're sh- we're like filling all these ads right mm-hmm. now we have connections mm-hmm. and it's fun right now or whatever but even with Rogan's the first six minutes of his podcast is him doing ads mm-hmm. but that's how you get paid right yeah. so there's gonna have to be a balance of those ads but when the if if the network does come here and say hey been getting some complaints of you guys swearing or saying mm-hmm. this or whatever, or that you know you guys are talking about controversial stuff and um, you guys are just openly saying it. That's when I'm going to be like, bm-hmm. bye bye. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm saying that right now, and I don't know how you feel about this. Cause no, one hundred percent. I'm going to obviously talk to you guys about mm-hmm. it. But well, here's like the thing is like obviously like we're not like implying the Sask Podcast Network would ever do it. Sure, but no, it's no, like no. just one of those things where like a if the mutual gain of being a part of it isn't like meeting like or the is it like if you're not gaining anything from being a part of it and they want you to like do all these changes that would like take away yeah. then there's no point of actually being a part of it and if they're going to ask you to censor yourself like we've talked about it on the show how we hate the fact that you know people are like being censored or you're getting like labeled racist if you just oppose people which is like one of those things where we like go back and just kind of like kneel down, just being a bitch, and you're kind of like going against your own word. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'd a hundred percent be on board just because a we have a show where like, like no offense to the SAS Podcast Network, but like as of now, like they were to come to us tomorrow and say that we're not actually gaining anything off of them, like anything like monumentally. Nothing yet. Yeah, no. it's still in its soft launch. Exactly. So. Like it's like, but I guess to be like more fair, like if it's say CBS came to us to the same thing, like you need to like censor yourself, like no, like we're good. Yeah, we've survived this long. Like the the only thing I would say is if someone said, "Hey, we just want you to do reviews on our radio station, for instance, mm-hmm. and just go in there and do a quick like five ten minute review." Mm-hmm. Sure, that doesn't change the show. It's an it's an extra part of it. Mm-hmm. Then like the one day, like, "Hey, Anthony, you go saw this movie. Go see it, or tell my brother to go, or mm-hmm. I'll go, or fuck if Nick, you know, if Nick finds some free time so he can oh, come he back." Works at a fucking radio station. Well, exactly. Like, but it's if they do something like that, then I'd be like, sure, mm-hmm. as long as it doesn't affect what we're doing here, because after so many years, mm-hmm. it's come. Like we finally found a good kind mm-hmm. of balance, and I think, I think now anybody that's started listening, I th- I would say the past four months, mm-hmm. at least, mm-hmm. um, if they've started, then I I'm hoping I'm thinking that they're getting a good program because like I've you know even our tour when I I ask them all the time mm-hmm. like I get feedback from our tour I'm like hey how was it how was this is like oh dude he's like it's always fun like I just mm-hmm. feel like I'm I'm in there even if you guys aren't doing the live show mm-hmm. he's i'm like I'm, I'm we're gonna try to figure that out we might do it on facebook a couple times mm-hmm. if we do it who knows but i get feedback from him i get feedback from anybody that's listened or has been on it my deep dives like i'm gonna like i don't know if i'll be able to send it to you usually what i do is mm-hmm. i send it to the person and i mm-hmm. have them review it and then i send it out but that's because i know you and we've well, I'm done this for so just long. a regular podcast like it's fun yeah but the cool thing, what I like about this one the most is that like it's just even more relaxed. Mm-hmm. Whereas the news one, where you know the main one, it's the main show, and we're just talking about a bunch of stuff and new stuff. Where this is just you just kind of roll with. Well, whatever. Like, like, uh, that's the thing too that I've noticed like lately, like the timeline. Like previously when it was more structured, it could feel like it would just be longer. But the fact that we've been going for like just under two hours, like the only reason I notice how long it is is because my ass is fucking killing me. Oh, it is. Other than that, it's, it's like okay, just we'll going like very soon. quickly. Yeah, man. Well, and that's what I found even with our regular podcast too. Mm-hmm. Like it goes by quick, mm-hmm. but I mean, that one's tough because I have to watch the time a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But with these ones, yeah, like the the one that we did for, for Endgame, mm-hmm. it's longer than the movie mm-hmm. 
and just by the fact that we didn't even realize what time it was. Mm-hmm. And so, and these are the types of stuff that, like, this is where the show is able to actually kind of grow, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for, I I would say the only thing that would be linking, not the only thing, but the thing that we could link for sure, like, your history with Entertain Facts, and then how it's bled into the F word, Mm -hmm. and how hopefully the F word can bleed into something else, like, build up the lazy Mm -hmm. Canadian, Um, all of that stuff. But like and now with the clips, that's mm-hmm. what that's the next phase, right? Mm-hmm. Is that like, I'm just glad we never stopped. Well, I don't think there's really like a like point where like any of us actually like openly discussed like stopping it. Yeah. Like I'm sure like everyone's had like thoughts of doing it. Like mm-hmm. I have, no, like I don't care. I've had the ones where I'm like, what's the point? Mm-hmm. Because like, uh, like I said, those times where it was like I was getting super upset, mm-hmm. and when we stopped doing YouTube, I'm like, is there even a point to doing something that doesn't seem to be exponentially growing? Mm-hmm. But then I'm, but then I'm thinking because there's there's a thing in economics called the sunk cost fallacy. Mm-hmm. So when you've invested so much into something that you're not willing to put it away just by sheer virtue of putting so much time into it mm-hmm. or money, um, people do that at like a slots. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, I've already put like two hundred bucks. Like, it's got a hit. Or at a restaurant that's bleeding money. It's like, but I've invested so much money. Mm-hmm. Or my real estate career where I invested so much money that a lot of it I didn't have at the time, but I needed to do it to see if I could help generate it. And I was not willing to leave when I should have left two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. But that's a sunk cost. But I guess it comes down to what Entertain Facts was for you and what the F word is for us. Mm -hmm. Where when you lost Entertain Facts, it was at a time where things were shitty, but Mm -hmm. it was almost like a weight that was lifted. Well, that's like, so like in that, I guess in the aspect like, in the summer, there was, like, a time where I was, like, you know what? Like, this is fucking stupid. Like, yeah, like, I want Entertain Facts back, like, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like, once things died down, and, like, literally in the summer, it was dead. Like, I had yeah. no job. Just a bum. Literally, I woke up, worked out, and that was it. That was my life. Wake up, work out, sleep. And that was it. And just hang out. That's the dream mm-hmm. for some people. Oh, it sucked. But I fucking hated it. <laughs> I hated it so much. Like, if I'm, like, married, and I'm, like, my wife is making $500 million a year, and I just want to be a stay-at-home husband. Could not fucking do it. Well, if you have kids, you might. Well, yeah, but still, I don't know. With, yeah, but it's just like being by yourself, like that'd be awful. I'd Dude, when when we were doing YouTube and I was trying to pump out as many videos, mm-hmm. I was barely even showing houses. Mm. I was sitting in this basement, binging shows as fast as I possibly could, so I can get a review as fast as I possibly mm-hmm. could. And it was, I was miserable. Mm-hmm. But anyways, cool. No, that's pretty much it. That was the end of my thought. That was it. Yeah, no. It was like, of course, like honestly, like I might try again, but it's just one of those things where the lazy Canadian is very fun to do. And I have like things where like I have a video idea. Like that doesn't really matter because I don't think majority of my followers listen to this podcast. But I want to do like a surprise video for October fifteenth because that's a, like four year anniversary. It's like just oh, a yeah. funny video. Like what the like where have I been? Like what have I been doing for like the like time has been dead and just stuff like that and just kind of like do a funny just stupid video. Well, that's what I did when we first, uh, when we kind of got back into mm-hmm. YouTube. I did that one video just saying, hey, guys, it's been a while or whatever. Mm-hmm. Shit hit the fan. And because I remember just before we stopped doing YouTube, uh, my buddy's brother died and I was at that mm-hmm. funeral and Soph's nephew died. Yeah, no, it was a fucking like bad week. Yeah. And Soph's 15 year old nephew mm-hmm. died yeah, that was... and my buddy's 35 year old brother. Like, mm-hmm. and I went to both those funerals and it was back to back. It was fucked up because mm-hmm. both of them were freak accidents and mm-hmm. I was I was waiting for the third like that's when you did the friendship breakers uh mm-hmm. episode was it I think that yeah. would have been like because I was behind the scenes because I would I didn't oh. I didn't want to go on camera because I'd just come back from the one funeral okay. um really fuck that's that seems like way longer I know fuck. that was last year yeah, no I didn't want to seem like last year yeah man and lo- like what's awesome is that so my buddy who lost his brother mm-hmm. Like he's getting married. That's whose wedding I'm going to. So it'll be like pretty incredible to Mm -hmm. just kind of go there. And it's going to be super emotional because his brother's not there. Mm -hmm. But we're actually celebrating something with the family that they can, you know, be happy for. Because Mm -hmm. at least like the immediate family, the cousins, the the one cousin got married last year. And that was a lot of fun. But, Mm -hmm. you know, this one's going to be a big, big Mm -hmm. one. Right. Um, But anyways, all of that stuff hit. And then my real estate career was even tanking even more. Mm-hmm. One could argue is because I was spending my time binge watching so I can do YouTube. Mm-hmm. But I thought one of them was going to take off. Mm-hmm. Right. Now we're just in the stride. 
and now you've kind of hit mm-hmm. a more relaxing stride. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like it, they come when they're supposed to. Yeah, no, that's the, th- the thing for me, like how much your mother quotes, like one of those things, I just like kind of, if anything ever stuck with me out, I just kind of like think about these quotes, like Ted Mosby saying, like, or I think it was like, sometimes things need to break apart to like make place or better things. So like with Entertain Back yeah. is Dying, I was kind of like, okay, well, whatever, like something's coming up next. Yep. And then there was one that was like, I forget what it was. I know there's one I kind of like think about a lot is like when Ted Mosby had that like bad year, like the worst year of his life. When he got punched in the, like, yeah, like everything. When he did the leap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, he's they like, did the like, leap in the other balcony. But he's like, but damn, if it wasn't like the best year of my life. And like, yeah. honestly, like this, like it has been, I would say the most stressful year of my life. But like, I've also like just grown and like learned so much in like a short period of time where like mm-hmm. in high school, where I was just kind of like very, not antisocial, just like. I didn't want to talk to people because mm-hmm. like I just didn't think they were worth my time. In a span of like four months, I went from like first girl I ever wanted to ask out, asked her out, went good, blah, blah, blah. Like, all these things I like learned how to do, like learned how to deal with all this bullshit going on, just mm-hmm. everything. And I just made me a better person. So, Well, and, and I guess that's the that's the growth part of it, mm-hmm. right? Like, and, and you can probably, when you started Entertain Facts or when you started your first video to mm-hmm. when Entertain Facts eventually, like when, when it mm-hmm. was gone and you take that, you take a look at those years in between mm-hmm. and that's kind of been like your consistent thing. Mm-hmm. Cause even with this, um, since Spider-Man homecoming, I guess I had got, I was, I was engaged already. Mm-hmm. I'd gotten that rental property, which was a nightmare for me. Mm-hmm. Now it's better. It's just there. Um, but it's not a nightmare. And then all of a sudden it's like, I'm gearing up to get married and Real estate's getting even worse. I had a good year f- mm-hmm. before that, but then after it was just like tanking and stuff. But when I look at the last couple of years, especially now where me last year, or sorry, me, let's say the beginning of August last year, mm-hmm. and me now is so different in every single way, mm-hmm. out of real estate, don't have the financial woes. I wait, I make way less money than I was. I did at the height of it. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't making consistent money at the height mm-hmm. of it, so and making more money, right? Well, like, real estate still fucking sucks, so you're good. You're good to leave. Yeah. yeah. But I was able to pull my shit together. Like, mm-hmm. we're talking, Soph and I are almost minimalists in what we do and what we spend mm-hmm. and everything. But we've been able to get our shit together all the while through all of that stuff, mm-hmm. plus, you know, the funerals, plus all of the, mm-hmm. everything like that, um, which, again, t- it's hard using those as examples because mm-hmm. the one funeral I was kind of it wasn't it didn't happen directly to me but the mm-hmm. second one did but they were no. so close mm-hmm. like they were the closest funerals I've had to deal with but anyways plus the wedding mm-hmm. plus all of that other stuff and yeah it's like just like you said you look back at it and you're like it's the one consistent thing mm-hmm. at least from the that time period and so for you you got four years with entertain facts being that mm-hmm. no matter what happens that's what you had every day it's also funny too because within no, it was a one, one week after that happening, I lost my job I had for eight years. Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. So it's like everything was just coming. You were there for coming. eight years, mm-hmm. hey? Yeah. Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. Well, it was family, like, again, for context, yeah. family owned. I was just like a fucking illegal child worker, but yeah. No, no, no. But then a transition when mm-hmm. Tino took over anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So, I still have that episode with Tino. I was going to say, I, I thought about that like a week ago. <laughs> no, I, it was after our podcast last week because we were like, kind of touching on some topics and yeah. I just kind of thought about that. Like, that's good. We didn't release it. That was so funny. It was still a good one, but the thing is, you and I got into uh, well, argument. It was good because, like, for the, I didn't, I didn't care about the argument, but like, I did back myself into a corner with a tipping thing, where like <laughs> I knew afterwards. I'm like, because like relatively speaking, like I actually do tip like quite a bit when I go out. Not like, but I tip when I go out. Like ever since after that, I've like done it. <laughs> and even when I did say it, I'm like, this isn't, this isn't what I'm trying to say. It's just like I was yeah. saying, like I just don't usually go out, and that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah. said it, and I backed myself into the corner where I refused to admit I was in the wrong. Yeah. So I just kind of like took it. Well, I've been working on this thing now. Uh, it was in the chapter of Peterson's book and it's um, one of them is be precise in your speech. Mm-hmm. And the other one is always tell the truth if, uh, or if not, don't lie. That's mm-hmm. the next chapter after. So then I've been really focusing on, on that. Like essentially both of those things are don't say things that make you weak. Mm-hmm. And if that means that you don't have to say it, like I've been saying less things mm-hmm. in my day to day than I have before. Because I found there's so many things that I say that actually make me weak, and I've done it on this podcast before. Because, mm-hmm. you know, me as a as as one of the guys talking, it's one of the co-hosts. There has been times where I've said things where I'm like, I think I said like the Lion King thing. Mm-hmm. 
I don't when I look back at that clip, I'm like, I don't watch The Lion King that many times. I maybe watch it three times a year. <laughs> but I think I said I watch it like ten times a year just to prove that I know it very well. <laughs> and it was just like which made for a hilarious clip, but it weakened me big time. And I'm pretty sure anybody that listened to it was probably like, this guy's a fucking psycho. Like, I can't listen to this anymore. That was still the funniest episode. I was like, so edited. funny. But it was it was so funny, but it was embarrassing because I'm like, I made myself look super weak. There. Would I have won the slap bet? Like, was I right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't say, well, I think I changed it. Did, did we change it to a slap bet? No, it was a slap bet first and you said you'd do it and you just said you just didn't do no, it. No, no, no. I think it was the, I'm standing up in the theater saying you're the smartest No, person. it was first because I remember you said, if this happens, like, I was a slap at first. I remember this. You, I remember the, you were like very violent with your description of how you're going to slap violent. the fuck out of me. I was super bad. I and was terrible. It was like a, the week after. It was like, okay, I'll just like stand up because it was the Jake Peralta thing. Like you were the like greatest detective yes. slash whatever. Yeah, slash mm-hmm. genius. Did you want to slap me now? No, I don't care. Are you sure? I would not. I cannot slap someone. No? No. Is it because of mechanical, like like your actual, the mechanics of it you can't do? I just have to get feel? really like fucking angry to actually like invoke any violence on someone. Mm-hmm. Like naturally it's weird because like no one would expect this, but I'm a very silent guy usually. Like just it's at true. home, like people don't really know, like they don't notice where I am. Cause I'm just like there, I'm just sitting. Nobody silent. notices well, it's me. It's fine. Cause they don't bother me. And I don't bother them. So it's like a nice trade off. But like lots of people, like if I don't want to talk to someone, if I have nothing to say, I'll just sit there silently. And they're like, what's wrong with you, man? Like, why don't you talk? I'm like, I just don't fucking talk much. That's a hard, that's a smart and typical thing to deal mm-hmm. with because from a person that wants to engage with other people, mm-hmm. It's actually a really good technique to do because if someone's BSing, Mm -hmm. because I know I've been trying to BS and someone did this to me and then I've done it to other people, if you don't speak Mm -hmm. while they're trying to explain something, they'll keep, while they're trying to lie or BS Mm -hmm. you, they'll keep digging themselves deeper and deeper into their lie because Mm -hmm. you're not reacting the way that they think. It's super funny. I might have to do that. But that's that's the thing because everyone like, exactly, we're both like public speakers. Like people think like, for a pre- I won a presentation award for business because of how like, good of a speaker I was. I'm a terrible speaker. I'm a terrible public speaker. Remember my wedding? I, I screwed up my speech well, so a, bad. Well, you got to think of circumstance-wise. Like circumstances yeah, for a wedding. Yeah, but Soph went up there and she crushed. By it's like the opposite effect of MC. Oh, I think you're, does your wife public speak like at all? Or? No, she okay. did her engagement, but she wrote stuff down. My mistake was I never wrote anything down. But in front of people, I mm-hmm. froze. Then I cried a bunch because I'm a big baby. And then I kept having to sit down. Luckily, people thought that was a joke. Mm. But even at Nick's wedding, when I did the speech to the groom, mm-hmm. I screwed up. And people thought that it was part of it, luckily, because I was able to save it. But I still screwed up. And I had written it down. Mm-hmm. I'm just not good at talking to live people. I think that's my weakness because I don't have a lot of practice with it. For me, I just think the biggest reason I like well, I consider myself like a good public speaker is that I will like pick on people in the audience. Mm. Like even at Mosaic. Like I want like nothing like mean like where it's sure. actually like but like just funny stuff like the one guy who was dancing like I said thank you so much like I think you're actually better than people on stage and just shit like that where it's just well like, that's good you're engaging with an mm-hmm. individual um one of the lectures I was listening to uh, well it was it was Peterson himself he's like when I talk first of all when I do my lectures mm-hmm. I don't talk to people like I already have the answers for things mm-hmm. I have ideas for things and I. I try to work them out on stage with the audience. But what I do is I actually connect with an individual every single time. Mm -hmm. And you can see it if you watch his videos. When he talks to people Mm -hmm. or when he's talking to a large group of people, it always looks like he's talking to one person specifically at a time. And it's super weird, but it's impressive. And he can do like two and a half hour lectures Mm -hmm. with no nothing in front of him. He just goes. That's crazy. It's amazing. My dad could do that too. Like all the stuff, every speech he's ever had, Mm -hmm. I think he's only written two of them one was for my wedding and the other one was from like somebody's 50th anniversary or something like that like um one of the mm-hmm. people that work at the church but i know you could just come up with shit out of nowhere for it's presentations amazing. i never like have anything written down i'll just have the jot points on the back yeah. i'll look at it and i'll just bs it and my like, group like always hates it because they're like well should we write a script i'm like i'm not gonna write a script but like if you need it do it because i'm not gonna fucking like there's been times i have to say someone and it was a bad time too because we had an english project and my teacher like the teacher that like labeled me a white supremacist, like this same teacher gave jerk. me props because I like our group fucked up so because they didn't want to write a script, our speech, our script, mm-hmm. and I just kept every time they'd fuck up something, I would like change it like immediately and I like yeah. save them and pull it out of it like so much so that like I think we got a seventy percent and it was easily like a fucking failing project. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it's just shit like that. I'm just people always tell me I'm just naturally like witty and they always you always like have something to say like. 
I remember like people try roasting me or something. And like the thing I think about the most is I'm always just thinking to myself because I'm always silent. I'm always just like thinking to myself, just like trying to make myself just entertained mostly. Mm. So if someone comes up to me, I'm always, I'm already in the fucking thought process and my thoughts are like mean. Like I'm a mean guy. Like Ari Gold, I resonate with him so much just because there's some times where like I go off on people. Like I remember Stelio. Stelio's the biggest guy and the mo- most mean too and I hate it because it's kind of like. He's taller than you now. Oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. He once, did, he wanna... starts, once he starts learning how to use his weight, because mm-hmm. I think he's still trying to figure out mm-hmm. how to, like, he, that kid grew mm-hmm. yeah, fucking fast. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I think his, he hasn't figured out how to use his body. It was funny because we were at, um, we were at the hospital. His, his aunt, re- re- or his grandmother yeah. recently passed away. Um, well, Soph's aunt, too. Mm-hmm. But him and his dad were in the room, at the mm-hmm. hospital room. And they look like two inflatable arm flailing tube men just bumping into each other because they're just like their arms are down. Mm-hmm. And even his dad sometimes looks like he doesn't know how to use his arms, mm-hmm. even though he's been like six foot three or something forever. Mm-hmm. But it's just funny watching them like bob mm-hmm. around into each other like these two poles just like fighting around. It's really funny. I feel bad. But he's going to bonk you one day. He uh, he deserves a lot of these fucking angers. Not all of them. There are yeah. some unwarranted. But I remember in Saskatoon, like for our, like Greek dance trip, I this was, I was there. This was after. This was after our talk in the hallway. I come back and I think Theo called me Thunder Tits or something. And I was super <laughs> drunk, so I'm like, Thunder Tits. So I'm like, okay, because they're all the whole group, the whole boy group were in our like my room. I'm like, okay, yeah. guys, I'm gonna go shower. I'll be five minutes, and when I come out, I'm gonna beat all your asses. I'm like, haha, funny. I come out, just start fucking wailing on Theo. Still comes up, I suplex him on the bed, and they're playing Cards Against Humanity. And they just bought this. They just bought the game. Like Petro just bought the game. The he box was on it. my bed. Suplexed them right onto the box. Oh, <laughs> I felt so bad. Did you buy him another one? And I offered. It was just like it wasn't like destroyed. It was just kind of like one of the things. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. you didn't wreck the whole. Yeah, thing. no. You just wrecked their experience. I guess so. It was pretty fun. I stand by it. Gotta be careful. What do you say? We want to wrap this up. I think so. What are we gonna call this one? I think Godfather's it history of F? of F. History of F. I think that's what like you said that? last week. Or do you like Godfather's of F? No, history of F. I think history just sounds nicer. Yeah. History of the F word or just history of F? Hmm. I think F word is more natural. Like to say history, history of the F word than history of F. No, actually, let's go history of F because it also is entertained facts. Okay. I think that's the well, big thing. Ties that's in the big takeaway. Things. Either way, like the big takeaway is the fact that like, first of all, you just got to keep going at it. And second of all, you can go from zero to 78,000, 78,900. And uh, just make sure that you don't get uh, copywritten. Your ass is closed. Yeah, no. Oh, um, yeah. Well, he's Canadian. I'm I'm one away. One away from getting deleted. Mm. I got to wait. That's why. This is one meme. It's of uh, Ryan from The Office with his notebook. Mm-hmm. Just oh, I saw down. that one. No, I, I didn't put it as a different one. But it's one oh. like, uh, like, you know, why, why do they have school shooter drills? Like the school shoot, like what do the school shooters like do in these drills? And it just has a photo of Ryan taking notes. Oh, shit. And I don't think it's bad, but it's just one of those things where like, you know what? Like, I'm just not going to post it. It was another meme page that had said that, or maybe it was yours, but it was something. It, it actually well, it wasn't was like, a meme. It was just that scene where he's like, I'm writing down the names of anybody that wronged well, Yeah, me. it was like, and then they get left on red. I posted it. Okay. That was the one. Mm-hmm. Well, I stole it from someone else, but, you know, I, I yeah. posted on my page. Well, this is, uh, I guess, your little history of entertained facts where the word EF, where F came from. Mm-hmm. And, uh,. Just some, yeah, I guess it ended up bleeding into just like a almost meeting with the people listening about the mm-hmm. F word and shit that we could do. Thanks for doing this finally. No, oh, it was nice. Yeah, it's fun here. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not responding. My That's ass okay. is so sore. It's okay. We'll get it. Well, you'll be all right. Just got to stand up and walk around for a bit. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all mm-hmm. for this episode. Thanks everybody for listening. You can find the Lazy Canadian at the dot lazy dot canadian mm-hmm. on instagram where he posts all his memes and stuff um obviously you guys know where you can find me you can find me on twitter at the f words g you can email us at the f word podcast at gmail.com don't forget if you've got reviews on anything that you've seen heard or played or any of the the things in between you can email us your review at the f word podcast at gmail.com and uh, thank you for everybody who, wherever you're listening from, whether it's Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Podbean, Radio Public, YouTube, or you found us on the Sask Podcast Network website. Thanks so much. And if you are able to leave us a like or a review or anything like that, it'd be very much appreciated. Mm-hmm. If, in fact, you do like it, if you don't, again, you can email us and let us know your grievances. Um, I think that's it. Make sure you're following Entertain Facts. Fuck, no, you keep saying dead. that. Make sure you're following the F word on Facebook and on Instagram for whatever we decide to post. And mm-hmm. we got more clips coming your way. Mm-hmm.
Thanks again for doing this, dude. No problem. And remember, EF is for fun. Uh, EF is for fun. I'm G. That was Anthony. And we are out.